We're in Ames, Iowa for the annual battle for the Cyhawk Trophy between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones. Brought to you in brilliant high definition by Phillips HD. Iowa, the gold buckle of the farm belt. For over a century, Iowa families have toiled the land, believed in and practiced a hard work ethic that has passed from generation to generation. But when work is done, those folks from Iowa sure know how to let loose. Today, the annual ritual that has brought this state together and separated thousands of college football fans, the fight for state bragging rights. Iowa and Iowa State will let the playing field decide who's number one in the heartland of America. The showdown for the Cyhawk Trophy. Big 12 college football, Iowa and Iowa State the battle begins now. For a state that doesn't have any major pro sports, this is the biggest game of the college football calendar every year. From Jack Dry Stadium in Ames, Iowa, Big 12 College Football Saturday. Presented by Phillips HD, it's the matchup, the showdown between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones. Hi everybody, Joel Myers alongside Dave Lappin. Welcome to Ames. Well, for a long time, this series was totally dominated by the Iowa Hawkeyes. That is not the case any longer. Over the last decade, pretty well even, and it really has been great for the entire state. You're right, Joel. In the 80s and 90s, Iowa won this matchup 15 straight times. All of a sudden, 98, a watershed game. Iowa State, better than a 20-point underdog, wins by 18. Since then, they've gone 7-4. and four. Both teams have to win for it to be a rivalry, and it is now a rivalry. And nobody knows that more than the new head coach for Iowa State, and that's Paul Rose. This is not his first rivalry rodeo. He knows exactly what this is all about. And he wasn't given this opportunity to be head coach at Iowa State. He earned this opportunity, and I think he's going to do a great job. A lot of energy and enthusiasm. And the guy that's going to be big for him today, Austin Arnod. And he has to kind of just settle down a little bit. Sometimes he gets geeked up like a linebacker to play, and he loses his mechanics and technique a little bit and some of his accuracy. But he's a dual threat. He can hurt you with that throwing arm and his feet. He's going to be large today. Slow start for the Hawkeyes last Saturday at home. Prevailed though over Northern Iowa. And a real nice story developing between their quarterback and their spectacular tight end. Ricky Stanzi gets the football to his tight end. And this guy is a big, big, powerful Tony Moyaki. Gets it done. And this kid... He's a mismatched nightmare. He's too big for safeties, as we see here. Too fast for linebackers. Stanzi had 22 completions last week. Ten of them went to his tight end. And this guy, number one in the conference, fourth in the country with those ten catches, including that touchdown reception. And even more importantly, Joel, he's as good a blocker as a tackle. He's like a third tackle blocking people, complete tight end. Well, when we come back, we are going to join Darren Horton in our College Football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, presented by Phillips HD, the battle for the Cyhawk Trophy. You immediately realize that there's something at stake when you're playing this game. Joel Myers, Dave Lattman, we head down to the sideline in just a moment. Hawkeyes coming onto the field and with the music of deep purple and smoke on the water in the background they love the classic rock of the upper midwest and it sure, sure sounds good to all of us we head downstairs now to jim knox knoxy coach you know all about this rivalry you grew up just 10 miles away from this iowa state campus what emotions are going through your mind right now as you're about to experience this for the first time as a head coach well normal pregame jitters i mean you're excited every time you're getting ready to kick off a football game this game is obviously a little bit more special because of my upbringing. Uh, but as soon as we kick it off, we'll be right back down to ground. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are ready to hit it hard in Ames, Iowa. And are we the lucky ones? Perfect conditions as Grant Mahoney gets it teed up. Iowa State won the toss. They have elected to take their option to the second half. And we are underway in the showdown for the Cy Hawk Trophy. Spavay will bring it back from the five. Oh. And held it at the 20 and down with a big divot at about the 19 down to the 21 yard line. Sandvig, the first one down there. Man, what a divot he took on that hit. <laughs> Holy mackerel. 
Ricky Stanza, you see his numbers last week against Northern Iowa. He started 11 last year, played in all 13, and he was fourth in the Big Ten last season in passing efficiency. He's a good size quarterback at 6'4, 220 pounds, a junior from Mentor, Ohio. He's got Robinson behind Morris in the eye. And moving the pocket by design. Quick one goes out to his wide receiver, Strauss, the senior from Avon Lake, Ohio. Man, as you look at the tackles, right to left to right, Riley Reef is starting on the left side. Bulaga, who was second team all Big Ten last year, sick, cannot make the start. Adam Robinson is going to be in the backfield. As we look at the Phillips HD starting lineup, so Strauss with the reception. First grab of the game gets about four, almost five yards. Slide the tight end over to the opposite side, roll the pocket again, and a bullet behind his intended target, Marvin McNutt, the sophomore from St. Louis, who's Hazelwood Central High School. Now defensively up front. Well, Frere, constant senior, three sacks last season. You look at the linebackers, Jesse Smith, honorable mention, all Big 12 last season. David Sims, a speech for transfer from Butte Community College. And freshman All-American Leonard Johnson on the corner over to the right side. So here we go with the third down, the first of the game for the Hawkeyes. Throw the football, first two snaps of the game. I'm sure that surprises Iowa State a little bit, figuring that Iowa would come in and try to just pound the ball. Oh, move it. Movement, left tackle. It was the young man who's starting, the redshirt freshman. His first career start, Riley Reef, number 77. Offense number 77. Five yards. Well, what, what happened on this though? The defensive end lurched forward into the neutral zone a little bit. Watch, watch the movement right there. Now, does that make the young tackle jump? They could have gone either way. You know, if you get in that neutral zone, a lot of times they call the defense. And, and that time, you know, if you beat up, it's your start. You're playing in, in the place of a, a potential All-American, potential top-round draft pick. And Reef just moved a little bit, but man, that's dicey. It could have gone either way. Now third and 11, three wide receivers set, and they'll operate out of the gun. Looking the flat instead, it's a bullet. McNutt's got it, and a first down for the Hawkeyes across the 40. What did he square up and fire a pill? 23 yards on the reception. Well, what Iowa's got is such size at the wide receiver position, Joel. 6'4", 215 pounds is McNutt, former quarterback. Big hands, huge hands on him. He just, it's effortless. He just plucked that football out of the air. Very soft, supple hands. And he, he basically gets that inside position with all that body size. You know, they're 6'4", and the cornerbacks for Iowa State are 5'9", and 5'10". The safeties are 5'8", and 5'9". Big size mismatch. First down for the 44 of Iowa. Pressure coming. And puts it up the grabs. Oh. What an interception. Oh. David Sims comes down with it, the strong safety. You know, he had initially committed to Oklahoma. Jesse Smith does some penetration. They brought Banks off the edge. Look at the blitz right here off the edge. And Smith gets in his face. The ball's thrown up for grabs. And that's just an outstanding effort by Sims. One-handed effort to secure the football. Very athletic play. Turnovers large in this rivalry game. First takeaway for Iowa State. Austin Arnout at quarterback. The junior from right here in Abe's High School at 6'3", 225. He's got an empty backfield at this point. Now he shifts Alexander Robinson with him. Bad really? movement up front. Well, the center forgot the snap count. Everybody moving. The center didn't snap the ball. A guy that can't forget that snap count is the center. Ball start. Offense. Number 63. Five yards. The down remains first. Bill Arnott last week. 16 for 28, but as you mentioned, a dual threat. 78 yards rushing, and that was a career high. And, and he will not only scramble, create plays, Joel, on, on plays that are pass calls, they have a quarterback run package, quarterback counter, quarterback sweep, quarterback draw. He is a legitimate threat, but with the back on his hip, it's two-back backfield. It's a first and 15 situation. And oh, little low throw. Scoop is made, though, and the grab for Darius Darks trying to create something and instead loses yardage. Anger in on that hit as we look at our Phillips HD starting lineup, the offensive line, and when you look at this group, they've got a four-year starter anchoring, and that's center Reggie Stevens. Talked about the skill guys, Alexander Robinson. 
Starts in the backfield, the junior from Minneapolis. Our Phillips HD starting 11. We'll look at the defense in just a moment for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So they're going the wrong way after the pick. Just about two minutes gone by in the first quarter. Reggie Stevens is a four-year starter. We've never played center before. He's played guard, doing a good job. It'll be Robinson. Oh. Man, a shot from the safety as he stumbled into the hit. A gain of about nine. Brent Greenwood, the free safety, made the stop. Well, the defensive coordinator liked what he saw from the junior underneath tackle. Carl Kluke, the junior from Caledonia, Minnesota. Anger in on an early stop. He led the Hawkeyes in tackles last year, the middle linebacker. And Brent Greenwood, he was honorable mention, all Big Ten last season. He was in on that last hit, and a pretty good one. So now a third and long. It'll be about third and ten for Iowa State. Don't want to be in these third and long situations against either of these defensive football teams. Five receivers spread in the field. Are not plenty of time. Oh. And on the deflection, intercepted. Tyler Sash has it. The safety off the pick. And inside the 35, he goes. It was put into double coverage. Tarpinian is the linebacker that tipped the ball. Tarpinian got a nice drop at the linebacker position. Number 33 in that white jersey. Got a hand on it. And then it's picked off at the safety position. And watch Tarpinian, number 33 in that white jersey, gets the tip. And then that's just a good, it's called the tip drill, exactly what it is. And Sash takes advantage. Tip, ball's airborne. Sash says, we do this in practice all the time. Respond on the tip drill. So Iowa State turns it back over, one apiece. Each team has thrown an interception, but Iowa finds the short field. That's the beneficiary on this exchange of turnovers. Well, let's see if they try to run the football as well. They've got a two tight end set for Adam Robinson, and he belted going over to the left side. Coming up, it was the outside backer, Fred Garrett, the senior from Shepherd, Texas. So it's going to be second and long. Let's take a look at what Iowa needs to do here. Last week, they only converted 25% on third down. They have to avoid third and longs. They have to stay in their rush lanes. Arnaud will tuck it and run. You have to keep your rush lane integrity, or he'll, he'll turn a negative into a positive. In the kicking game, we've already talked about it. They won their game last week against Northern Iowa by blocking two consecutive field goals in NCAA record. But they used all their special teams mulligans. Kicking game's huge in this rivalry. Caught it second and nine, but they emptied the backfield. Top throw trying to get Mo Moyaki in Bob, the backer. Jesse Smith just poked it away. Jesse Smith, 15 tackles last week in the opener. And this is just good relationship in the coverage. Coming into the slot, that's breaking on the football, route recognition, and getting after it. Now, you have to understand that that is who they are targeting. I mean, if there's anybody that they know that is going to be gone to in the passing game, it's, it's Moyaki. I would know for slow starts the last few years, but they've been an exceptional finishing team. And back to the month of November for Kirk Ferentz since 2020 and 10, coming up a bull win. And now at the gun on third and nine. Ton of time again. Going deep. He's got Johnson Cudianos. And it goes incomplete. DJK just not could not quite accelerate enough to get underneath that football. And he's uh, you know, he's the short receiver. He's 6'1. 6'1, 200 pounds. All the receivers, a couple of hundred pounds, 6'1 to 6'4. Good protection, visit vision unimpeded, a little bit more air underneath that football, put it on too much of a line drive, and the margin for error was too great there. You gotta get some air under it and let your receiver run under it. Now, Donahue get it out of bounds. It'll hit inside the 10. Moyaki's there, a number of Hawkeyes there, and like a good Wedge. He dives it inside the five. Both defenses responded to adversity. Takeaways, they shut it down. Three and out. Nice. We got a rivalry. Fast and furious. Boy, a number of possessions already because of back to back turnovers. And now, time for our fearless predictions presented by Phillips HD. All right, Karnak the Magnificent. <laughs> well, looking at what Arnaud did last week, obviously a dual threat. He had over 300 yards total offense. Now he's backed up. How will he respond? He's going to have to be a factor in the running game and the passing game for them to compete with Iowa, just like he had a big day last week. He is definitely the bell cop. Well, Arnott is operating from inside his end zone out of the shotgun with two to each side. So it's already our fourth possession of the game. Not much available for Alexander Robinson, brought down by Christian Ballard, the underneath tackle. Well, time for a Phillips HD game break. Let's go to the studio now and Darren Horton. Darren.
Joel in Happy Valley, number five, Penn State strikes for us. Daryl Clark to Evan Royster. Look at the juke right there, 49 yards. Number five, Penn State up, 7 nothing. All right, from Happy Valley to the upper Midwest, Ames, Iowa. We welcome you back once again. On the carry, altering his direction across the 10, out to the 12, Robinson, this time Anger hits him and brings him down. It'll be third and short as we look at our keys to the game. Well, just like they're doing now, run the football and stop the run. You know, they can't let Iowa State control the line of scrimmage. We'll hit the others in the second. And in the hurry up, Arnod dives across the 15. He's got it. Takes a pounding in the process. But tough kid, good sized quarterback. And as I mentioned, he ran some 78. His dad, uh, he's a legacy. His dad was a D back here. In fact, the three year start of the Cyclones in 80, 81, and 82. Well, backed out in their own shadow of their own end zone. They got that ground game going. It was, was the first key turnovers. They can, if they could have ended every possession with a kick, they already didn't do it. They've been thrown an interception just like Iowa has. We're even there in big plays. They have to create some chunk plays. And they they got to tackle well. They can't let five or six yard plays turn into 50 or 60 yard plays with missed tackles. Arnott on the play fake trying to buy some time oh. and almost intercepted again this time by Greenwood daring daring dicey play right there he had pressure could not snap his shoulder pads around squarely and threw the ball inaccurately this one is very very close look at the look at the penetration that Ballard with the rush and, and Arnod can't even follow through I mean his mechanics and technique just aren't there and that's that's dangerous to put that ball up with so many white jerseys in the vicinity Greenwood almost took advantage there are only four around the receiver yeah so Arnod one for its three with a pick minus four yards and that was because of the reception and the loss on the play and now Robinson scrambles for about three up to the 19. Now when you see that spread offense think of their offensive coordinator and what he's trying to implement and that's a former offensive coordinator who's only 34 years old and he was at Rice the last couple of years in fact passing scoring total offense Rice top 10 of the country Tom Herman is their offensive coordinator and you saw the signals there's a there's a true signal giver and then there's a false signal giver over there and there's indicators there's all kinds of things going on but Arndod knows exactly how to look at it and diagnose it as well as all the receivers as they look over there so now third and long third and about seven Looking underneath, and right through Darius Reynolds, and that was a 100 mile an hour fastball with the D back uh, Tarpinian on his back. Yeah, Tarpinian did a nice job in the in the passing game. He deflected the ball that was intercepted, and that time he took a nice deep drop once again, and it was just shadowing. I mean, it was like he was a new suit all over the receiver and timed his contact with the receiver simultaneous to the football's arrival. Wide receiver Paul Chaney Jr. waits for the punt now. From Mike Brantner, the senior from Bettendorf. It'll be his first punt of the day. And he gets out a wobbler, returnable time. Chaney who, making a miss now with a flag down from behind. Chaney goes down inside the 45, close to the 43. Joe Conklin has an illegal block. That's going to come back, not just a 10 yard penalty. That's going to cost him the field position on the return. So Brad break for the Hawkeyes after a real nice make a miss return by Cheney. Well, you can see where they like they like that. Return, yes. return illegal block in the back. Returning to number 20. 10 yards, first down. They did get Conklin. He was trying to peel to the gunner off the punt returner and it cost him. We'll come right back and score the so far between Iowa and Iowa State in Ames. Scoreless so far, six minutes into the game, but already this is the fifth possession of the contest between these two teams. Well, we got together with the Hawkeyes head coach earlier this week. Kirk Ferentz, now in his 11th year at Iowa, he knows all about the rivalry with Iowa State. We lost our first uh, four games, I believe it was, in the series, and uh, they had some excellent football teams, and uh, they've, you know, it's, it's been basically been a close game each and every year with the exception of maybe two, and special teams and turnovers are involved in both of those. And he also talked about somebody who's his old friend, and in fact, he was on the staff with Dan McCartney, the longtime head coach here. They were opposite line coaches for nine seasons together for Hayden Fry at Iowa. So he knows all about what right. Dan McCartney did, the way he rebuilt this program. Kirk was offensive line coach. Dan was defensive line coach for Barry Alvarez. 
big. Yep, Brian Wegger has taken over a true freshman running back, his first carry. He lunges ahead for about three out to the 34. You know, we were talking about the staff for Hayden Fry, and boy, he had some outstanding assistance. Well, here's Hayden Fry, first of all, the head coach. And then immediately, Bill Snyder. Hey, he's back at Kansas State. And McCarney, right there. There's Kirk. Currents right there. That's that's wait a minute, Barry wait a minute. Alvarez. Right. Let's Barry Alvarez right Barry. there. So I mean, you got you got yourself a, a coaching tree right there that's just unbelievably outstanding by Hayden Fry. It'll be second and seven. Almost seven minutes into the opening first quarter. Available on the outside. It's Trey Strauss. And he's got the first down. So he hit on the boundary. Had some space, an eight yard pickup, and they moved the chain. Second first down to the game for the Hawkeyes. And you know, the other thing about the Iowa coaching staff under Kirk Ferentz, he's there 11 years. His offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe, has been there 11 years, as well as his defensive coordinator, Norm, Norm Parker, has been there 11 years. The continuity and consistency. I mean, they've been in every one of these rivalry games together. They can reference back and make adjustments instantaneously because of all their experience and their experience together. Invaluable. Well, how good has it been for Iowa Hawkeye fans? They've had two head coaches over 30 years. Back to throw. Plenty of time once again, oh. and just slightly behind Strauss from Stanzi. He's got some arm strength, doesn't he? He can he can chuck it. There's no doubt about it. And let's take a look at the guy we're going to watch all game long. Our Phillips HD fearless predictions. Tony, it's a, it's a tight end that can just absolutely get things done for you. Ten receptions last week. That's number one in the Big Ten, number four in the nation. And that touchdown catch ended up being the game-winning points. He's a powerful, explosive blocker, complete football player, and we're going to monitor his efforts all game long. Junior from Wheaton, Illinois. Medical redshirt in 2007. Underneath it goes. And the grab for the one on cue that we're talking about, Tony Moyaki. Moyaki has fought a laundry list of injuries. There's no question about it. Broken hand, broken foot, all kinds of muscle injuries. But this guy is legit. I mean, he is a big time NFL prospect. Pretty good coverage by Garen. Yeah, it, it, and, and really there was good coverage by Jesse Smith as well. But the thing about him, he's such a big body. Even though you're in position, he can body you out, like box you out for a rebound. And Stanzi has complete confidence in him to throw him the football and realize that he's going to be the one to, to use that body to his advantage. 6'4", 250. So a third down, 1-5, almost 6. Stanzi out of the gun. Ton of time in the pocket again, and not close, as he was going for Moyaki. He had stepped out of bounds anyway. Good coverage downfield. Smith in on the play. Nice little uh, change in formation. Get Moyaki a little out and up. And that's pretty good. You can chuck him, get your hands on him, fight all you can. He's, it's a tough matchup. There's a big size differential there. Cedric Johnson, 205 pounds, when he's 250. Donahue with a 42 yard average last year. Punts it away to Josh Lenz. Freshman from Dubuque. High Wobbler, very short one. And Lenz with a fair catch coming up and taking it in at the 25 to the Cyclones. A little more breathing room than the last time when they took over back at their own four. Time now for our Iowa Corn Cyhawk rivalry flashback. 2002 Kinnick Stadium, Iowa. 8 0 in the Big Ten, 11 1 of the year. Fred Russell, 46 yard touchdown run, 133 yards on the day, but Seneca Wallace was the story. Only loss of the year for Iowa, 36 31 state. 2003 Jack Tri Stadium. Dave and I did the game. Now what a day for the Hawkeyes. Nathan Chandler hooking up with Maurice Brown, 17-yard score. Kading had four field goals for the game. Easy win for the Hawks. And in Jack Trice in 2007, five field goals. The last one coming with just a second as it went through left on the clock. And Culbertson tying a school record with five field goals. 15-13 Iowa State. Last year in the slop because it rained most of the day, it was a 17-5 win for the Hawkeyes. Not a real pretty game. But they pulled away down the stretch. Always, it seems like they're always close. 81-yard punt return was a big play in that one. 
Off right tackle. Alexander Robinson powers his way out to the 30 yard line for a gain of five. Brought down by Broderick Pins, the young man who had one of the two blocks, uh, saving blocks back to back for the Hawkeyes last week. No huddle, controlling tempo, trying to fatigue the Iowa defensive front seven. And make sure they can't change personnel too, Dave. Yep, Tom Herman did this at Rice. You know, you can control the clock, you can control tempo, you can control the conditioning of the opponent. Option read, Arnott. Nice little nifty move to get an extra 3-4 and a first down. Their second of the game outside the 35 to the 37. The Iowa State offensive line is a big group. They average over 330 pounds per man, the biggest in the NCAA. And they stay in two-point stances. You see, they do not get down in that three-point stance. And they're signaling the plays in. One's live, one's phony. And they, they'll mix it up. What you call me? <laughs> Call it a decoy, please. First and ten at the 37. On the play fake, he floods it, and over the middle, the big tight end, Catlett's got it. The senior from Fort Collins, Colorado, gives him another first down, their first entry into Hawkeye territory, down to the 37. And this is another guy that is a very versatile defense uh, tight end. He can block defensive ends on the line of scrimmage. They can split him out as a wide receiver. They can put him in the, in the wing back position as a fullback. Very, very good football player. Arnott, quick count, another play fake. And now he's going to take it on his own. Slides, takes a pop from Sash at the same time, but still gets good yardage, about five, six yards on that first down carry. So five plus to play in the opening 15. We remind you, the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order shifts for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com, at home, with the O. And right now, Cyclones moving from their own 25. All the way just outside the 30 of the Hawkeyes. The score is so far. This 57th edition of the Cyhawk meeting. Quick out. And on a little flanker and a screen. It goes over. His wide receiver, Darius Reynolds, the junior from Woodbridge, Virginia. And he's short of the first down by a couple of yards. Cedric Johnson, his teammate at the receiver position, trying to throw a block for him. It was just a few receiver deal out there, screen. Not huge splits by Iowa State's offensive line, but healthy. Give it to Robinson. Man, he maneuvers his way to a first down. Boy, a dual threat. You have to read that handoff because of what Arnott can do on the ground as well. And it's down to the 22. And you, you really have to uh, respect both phases offensively for Iowa State. Last week, very balanced. Drew for over 200, ran the football for over 200. And running back and quarterback split those yards. And that's exactly the way the Iowa State coaching staff wants it. You want a two-headed monster in that running attack. They picked up 442 yards of total offense in the opener. They gave up close to 400, though. On the play fake, Arnott into the corner, looking for Johnson and overshoots him. Not close to his wide receiver, Cedric Johnson, the sophomore from Troop, Texas. Pretty good coverage by Lowe. He was right there. He was pressing it all the way. He was not fooled whatsoever by, by the play fake. As you're approaching the red zone, this is where Iowa was so effective last week. They got in the red zone twice offensively and scored two touchdowns. Defensively, Northern Iowa got in there four times. Iowa only gave up one touchdown, three field goals. Red zone uh, play was instrumental in their ability to win the game at the end of the game with those two consecutive block field goals NCAA record. Iowa State will they keep it on the ground? Quick toss over the left side. Nice block for Robinson. Flag on the play, though it's coming back. And it was the wide receiver, I believe, Darius Reynolds, who was sighted for the hold on the outside. Yeah, I think it might have been Darks. Or is it Reynolds? Is that a five or a six? Can't really see. But that receiver said it. That receiver that was out there was the one that was locked up and grabbed. During the play, holding offense number five. Ten yard. Repeat, second down. Darius Reynolds on the edge and trying to make a block. Big plays happen when the perimeter guys are blocking, but you can see right here, grab the jersey and take on in the takedown. It's right at the point of attack. You have to call that. Unfortunate, but it has to be called. Keep your hands inside, no grab. So instead of a first down, it's going to be second and long. All the way back to the 30-yard line. And that would have been first and goal for Robinson and the Cyclones. Bunch him up on the wide side of the field. Go the other way on a little flanker screen. It's Reynolds again. <laughs> a little bit too much dancing. He is down and brought down by a host, but finally Claiborne gets into the defensive end. Yeah, too many moves. 
You know, when you get the kickout block, and watch, he'll get the kickout block right there. Go. Just turn it upfield. Square your shoulder pads up and get upfield. And now you're a whirling dervish, a Tasmanian devil. And you spin it and you dizzy and you take it to the ground. So third and still long, about 17 from the 29. He's had a three to play. What a brilliant afternoon in the upper Midwest where names Iowa. Kickoff was right about 75 degrees, supposed to top out near 80 today. What a classic setting. Now the double move just over the shoulder of Marquise Hamilton, the senior from Oklahoma City. Good idea. The execution wasn't there. No, Greenwood was out there, and you know they got the they got the matchup that they wanted. You know, and, and really a pretty good job getting after it, and, and having to play more today is William Lowe. In, in Greenwood, though, that they they get the receiver on the safety, and the receiver pulls away from safety, but overthrown by Arnold. Brent Mahoney, the sophomore from Marion, Iowa, will attempt a 46-yard field goal try, and they're a little bit shy of what they need personnel-wise on the field. In those opportunities, when you get the, the matchup you want, wide receiver on safety, you have to take advantage. You have to separate in your route and make the big play when it's there for you. So a timeout is taken, an unnecessary one, but personnel-wise, Paul Rhodes only had 10 guys out there. Tomorrow, season starts. Fox NFL Sunday Twin Bill. Cowboys, Bucks, Vikings, Browns, Eagles, Panthers, Lions, Saints. Ton of games, and then second half of the Twin Bill. Some nice choices as well. It'll all start with the number one pregame show in America, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Check your local listings for the game at the start time in your area. You know, it, it's, uh, there's the old axiom. Usually the biggest improvement is made from week one to week two in college football. So far today, both defenses have shown their ability to come out and stuff the opposition offensively. I mean, it's been a defensive battle. There have been turnovers. There's been solid play. Mahoney, 19 of 48 last year. Going to be a 46-yard attempt on its way. Right on target. And a 3 to nothing lead for the Cyclones. It was all set up with a long pass, the 26 yarder to the tight end, Catlin. Penalty prevented a first and goal, but still, Mahoney comes through the sophomore. Marion, man, he gets three on the board as the Cyclones strike first. No time for our free credit report.com on the sideline. Let's go down to Jim Knox. Knox, eight. Okay, actually, Joel, in the stands, because before the game, Noxie, you're showing good feet. Noxie, you're showing good, quick feet there, brother. I'm a little bit faster than last week when Ralphie smoked me. Yeah, I was a waiting. Bit faster this week. Noxie, you're working on your 40 time, I can tell. Thank you very much, Joe. I like that high knee action. Very nice high knee action, Noxie. Becky O'Meara, and it's going to be an onside kick covered by the Hawkeyes. They were ready for it. They're offside, yeah. though. It's coming back. That's a huge mistake. Well, no. it, it was offside Iowa State. Yeah, I said Iowa State's offside. Well, so Iowa. they recover the football. They're, they're going to lose that opportunity. Iowa's got the ball to the 46. The Hawkeyes had the ball. Oh, I thought Iowa no. State. Hawkeyes covered it. They were ready for it. So decline the penalty, and now Iowa in great field position. One thing you can't do, if you're going to pull the trigger on something like that, they get the five yards. It's added on yep. at the end of the play. Outside on the kicking team, number 24. Five yards at the end of the run. First down. If you're going to be that aggressive and, and take a roll, roll the dice like that, you're going to have to execute. And getting off off the line of scrimmage before the kick is made, you have to time it up. The kick is right next to you. He crosses the line, you can see, with his entire body before the ball is struck. You have to make sure that you're onside. If, if Iowa State had recovered that, what a tragedy that would have been. You're giving him five yards anyway by being offside. It was covered by Bruce Davis. Very alert play by Davis. Stands it, going for the bundle, wide receiver got away, McNutt, and thrown behind him. Yeah, well, he got away, and he got behind the D-back, Bernard Banks on the coverage. Well, you got a little double move going on the sideline, and, and he, he just chokes it down, little out and up, little double move action, and he had some separation, ball just not kept in the field of play to give him an opportunity to make a play on it, 
and both coaches being very aggressive. Right. One saying, I'm going to try the onside kick, keep the ball, get the ball back after kicking the field goal, and then right away after the penalty is assessed, I'm going to go right for the throw. I'm going to go for the jugular double move to score a big touchdown. Both coaches getting into this rivalry. Robinson in the eye behind Morse on the play fake. Moving the pocket again. And a perfect route run. Strauss has it. He's got a first down. Oh, that's late. And that's late. Out of bounds inside the 25 to the 24. Flags flying, as you can see. Banks just let, got overly aggressive. Banks lost work, track of where he was in the football field. And well into that little five-yard area of white chalk, he, uh, he gets the personal foul. Nice little pivot route to the sideline. And Banks, okay, he's done. He's done. He's, he's 10 yards out of bounds. You first can't be foul. body slamming him. Late hit, number seven, the defense. Half the distance to the goal line. First half. He, he bulldogged him like a steer. You know, you can't be bulldogging him to the turf off the field to play like that late. And that bad penalty, that, that's two bad penalties. You know, you're trying to execute an onside kick, and you, you're, your gunner, your your all L1, your return, your cover guy right next to the kicker's offside, and now you have a personal foul, and here they are in the red zone. Iowa trying to take advantage of self-destruction by penalty by Iowa State. It's down to the 12, three to nothing early lead is in jeopardy now for the Cyclones. Willing it outside, good blocking by the wide receiver and tight end on that side, and Adam Robinson is he in? No, out of bounds with the one. Not only the tight end and the wide receiver, Joel, but Reef, the big. Offensive tackle that's in the football game. Watch Reef. Here's let's see if he gets in. Let's see. The ball is in. No, I'm not sure if it gets in. It went right over the pylon and they marked him out of bounds at the one yard line. I don't know. If, remember, every play gets reviewed in college football. Will they take a longer look at this? And I think they will. I think this is worthy of more visualization up here in the booth by the replay officials. Right, what about in 3D? That's right. <laughs> Later today, there's a football game in 3D, college football. Officials timeout. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was out of bounds, short of the goal line. Now, if he had, you, you want to keep it in the outside arm, or if, he's got it in the inside arm. You'd like to have it in the outside arm, but he's got it in the right arm now to, to try to get it close. His foot is not out of bounds. His body is out of bounds. And the, his foot comes down before the, his arm and the ball crosses the pylon. Watch the left foot. When he comes down with the left foot, right here, the foot comes down. Ooh, it's almost simultaneous. And it, it, the ball, his elbow goes over the pylon, does the football. It might be inside the one-yard line, but I'm not sure I reverse it and give him the touchdown. I, I'm not sure about that. That's a tough call. It's a tough call for the replay officials to make. But the good news on that play for Iowa, Reef did an outstanding job of blocking it. Belaga has had been talking to him during timeouts, and, and Reef had a pancake block on that uh, on that play as it sprung to the outside. I like to play the tight end as well. Don't forget about Alan Reisner, number 82, a junior from Marion, Iowa. Number 82, he just carried on his block all the way down the line of scrimmage. You know, there used to be a rule that the pylon, you know, goes to infinity, and I'm not sure if that After rule is still the same. The ruling on the field stands. Right. Short of the goal line. First down. So stands in the offense. Back out there on the first and goal at the one. And remember, this was all set up by a gamble by Paul Rhodes and his staff. They went for the onside kick, covered by Bruce Davis. Then, after the straws catch, the personal foul. And it took it down to the 12. And even if Iowa State had recovered it, they had a penalty on that onside kick that you can't have. Little dump off, touchdown, Iowa. It goes to the fullback, Brett Morris. Iowa taking full advantage of short field as a result of penalty after onside kick. They heads up to recover the onside kick. They accumulate five more yards. Then there's a personal foul, unnecessary roughness on Banks that gives them 50. They get 20 yards of their drive by penalty. Iowa State's not going to like that. Daniel Murray, young man from Iowa City, with the Hawkeyes up by four. So the play fake and a real good. Bit of deception by Stancy. Yeah, a little uh, press the digitation, you know, hide the football. Pretty good little action there. And, and Morse just releases immediate, immediately into the uh, perimeter. And there's a blown coverage there. Linebacker gets picked a little bit. Brain cramped and let Morse release out of the backfield, totally unmolested. 
and uncover him. Yeah, we saw him go right past the strong safety. David Sims, who bit on the play fake. It was a beauty. And now a 7-3 lead on the short field drive that took less than a minute by Iowa. A Phillips HD scoring drive. Let's see if Iowa State gets back to what they were doing well early in the game, and that's and it's still early, of course, but 52 of their 77 yards so far have come on the ground for the Cyclones. When they put it up, good things have not worked. They have not happened for this squad. Only 25 yards through the air on fourth nine passing. I think at some point they'll get their passing game going if they keep that ground game established. Good things happen if you run the football, and then you're throwing it because you want to, not because you have to. David Sims going back with Leonard Johnson waiting for the kick. Murray tees it up. It's perfect conditions. We've always had him close, haven't we? Whenever we come to Ames. We're inside of two minutes left in the first quarter. It'll be Sims over to the near side. The strong safety will take it to the seven. And a big strong safety wheels his way on the spin across the 30. And up to the 33. So solid field position. Now for the Cyclones. For a Phillips HD game break, let's head back to the studio. Darren Horton wants the latest. Joel in Gainesville, number one Florida, is on the board versus Troy State. Tim Tebow finds Deontay Thompson, six yards point of the end zone. His 30th straight with a touchdown pass. 7 nothing, number one on top. All right, Darren, thank you. It's just a question of how many for Florida today. Yeah. No doubt. It's going to be name that score. Robinson stays with the backfield. Arnott on a quick slant. It's complete. And Hamilton, the senior from Oklahoma City with a flag down to the far side, has a first down, but will come back. It was thrown right at the original line of scrimmage by the linesman. And it's coming back. I, I think he might be calling the right tackle, not being up on the line. Not, not enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Only six people on the line of scrimmage. I think he's calling an illegal formation. Illegal formation. Yeah. Five men in the backfield. Offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. Five men in the backfield means that, you know, there's only six up in the line of scrimmage. So, you know, you, you have to, uh, you can, can't have more than four in the backfield. Here's the, here's the, the five offensive linemen. And, you know, we don't have the entire formation in screen, but you have to have two more up there on the line of scrimmage. Flanker's screen. Back. Reynolds hits the deck. And this time, yes, it is Reynolds hangs on. Tyler Sash over there anyway. Well, it was a couple of streaks coming into the game. A winning streak coming into the game for Iowa. And Iowa State finally, it's been pretty dismal around here, as Cyclone fans know. They snapped a 10-game losing streak last week in their win over North Dakota State. As they'll call the play, they'll take their time once they get to the line after the loss. Again, inside of a minute to play. On the flank of the screen. But Iowa comes in on a roll. Arnott just barely tripped up across the 30 out to the 32. Let's see if they get back to the basics, though, when they have manageable first and 10 situations. Bins tripped him up, the defensive end. You know, when you have a runner, a runner like Arnott at the quarterback position, you can outgap the defense. Because anytime there's a back in the backfield with him on his hip or wherever, that's an extra blocker. And, and it's like a two back set. It's not just one running back in the backfield. The quarterback can run the football as well. Kind of like Brad Smith in Missouri? Yeah, Brad Smith. I mean, Bill Snyder did it with Michael Bishop and other quarterbacks in Kansas State. I mean, it's been done by quite a few teams in college football out of the shotgun with a quarterback that's mobile and designed run package. It, give, it gives you an opportunity to outgap the defense and get an extra block or an extra hat at the point of attack. That is going to do it for the first 15 minutes of play. A lot of possessions, a lot of different series with turnovers back to back to start the game on a couple of interceptions. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday, all presented by Phillips HD. And at the end of the first quarter, the Hawkeyes of the Big 10 on top of the Cyclones from the Big 12, 7 to 3. Fifty years ago, Clay Stapleton's Iowa State's football squad shrank from 55 to 30 players before the first game of the year, and after winning their first game on the muddy field, they became known as the Dirty 30. And their unquestioned star, number 16, Dwight Nichols, who was named first-team All-American, three-time All-Big Seven, was the first Cyclone player to ever place top 10 in Heisman Trophy balcony. 
Nichols ended his career as the all-time Big 7 rusher. 638 career carries, ranked second in NCAA history at the time. Well, if the 30-30 was Iowa State's most beloved team, Nichols, its star, and also its captain. Nichols died last February in Dallas, but his memory lives on today. It aims his school marks his fable team's 50-year anniversary. And while we were away, well, 22 of the 25 surviving members of the Dirty 30 are here with their head coach, Coach Stapleton. And what a story is we got to spend time with him yesterday. And John Cooper, former Ohio State coach, one of the members of the Dirty 30, he spoke to the squad yesterday at the walkthrough. And on first down, the Cyclones have it on third and long, and it's available. It's taken in, dropped, though, after the catch, and it's going to be incomplete. Hamilton had it. Too good to be true. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Iowa State because Iowa just rushed three and dropped eight into coverage, and Hamilton found the open spot, and Arnott got it there. I mean, it was an, an outstanding route, and he did everything but secure the football. And boy, I'm, I'm not, that, that could have been called a catch fumble, but they decided he never had full possession. He did get his hands out there to, to secure it, but never got it tucked. Paul Cheney Jr., wide receiver from St. Louis, waits back at about the 25 yard line. As Mahoney gets into it. So three and out with a punt. And make it Bradner, actually, with the punt of that one. Man, Cheney's got it back at the 31. And well, we were just talking about the Dirty 30. Jim Knox, let's head downstairs. All right, Joel, here he is, former Ohio State head coach. John Cooper was a member of the Dirty 30. If you played safety, what do you remember most about that team? I was a proud member of that Dirty 30. I remember how tough we were, mentally tough. I used to tell our coaches and, and, and players, if we got, if I got as much out of my players as they got out of us, we'd have won about 10 national championships. But really tough, tenacious, hard-nosed football team. The Dirty 30 got its name after a game, rough game against Denver in the rain. Went to Denver and actually shut them out as we were leaving the field. All the players had mud all over their jerseys and everything. And one of the trainers says, here comes the Dirty 30. And that name sort of stuck. And now that name, you know, sort of, sort of made us uh, significant that year. All right, John, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Joel? All right, great story and a reason to celebrate that group. Daryl Johnson Kodianis out of Campbell, Ohio, on the comeback route. That out. Yeah, DJK running a good route. Little naked bootleg. Run fake to the left, roll the quarterback out by his lonesome to the right. Little comeback route, as you described, Joel. And the key there, when you plant that foot upfield, you got to break on a sharp angle back. You cannot round it. And DJK did a good job of breaking back on a sharp angle and found himself open, little separation. John Cooper, Hall of Fame coach in college. Wegger met before he could get back to the line. He lost about a half yard. They wrapped him up, Fred Garrett, the weak side backer, in a hurry. Wegger, a true freshman from Dakota Dune, South Dakota. The snap before they had another true freshman in the field from Cedar Rapids, Keenan Davis. So they're not thinking about these red shirts. No, they're not. They've got three freshmen, true freshmen, that'll be major participants. And Iowa has joined, has enjoyed, Joel, a tremendous advantage in average drive start field position. Iowa has started at their own 44-yard line for an average, whereas Iowa State backed up to its own 23. On first down, though, Iowa has struggled. Only two and a half yards on first down has put them behind the chains. And on third down, as a result of that, they've had over eight yards to go, 8.7 yards to go as an average on third down. Too many third and longs for them, and they wanted to get in third and medium, third and short. They only converted 25% of the time on third down last week, and third down starts on first down. Reset the play clock. And now Iowa will come back to the line. They wanted to fix the clock and I thought it was a short play clock. So Iowa back and coming out of the shotgun on second and ten. Blitz coming off the edge. A little dump off, wow. not a bad grab by Weger. Beats him and gets the first down. How about that for a true freshman? Little guy, 5'11", 205. Maybe stick him. <laughs> that was big time because the pressure gets there. Iowa State blitzing a little bit more than Iowa anticipated. And that's just an unblocked linebacker right in quarterback's face. Stanley does a good job of getting the ball out there, but even better catch. I mean, to get keep the play alive by delivering the football and, and, and Weger getting it done like he did it's just good effort all the way around I mean the the protection broke down linebacker should not come clean right up the gut like that but Stanzi and Wager paid it off back took the blitzer on the outside that was the defensive back Benton you got to go inside out. going deep over the middle and overshooting everybody 
trying to get it once again to Johnson Culliano. The mistake that was made there, if, if the back was the only person involved in protection on that side, you have to go inside out. The shortest distance to the quarterback is up the middle. You can't let the middle go and go to the outside. You have to block inside out. And a little play action fake here and trying to get the ball right up the middle of the football field. Good effort by Iowa State. Everybody's in good position. And now you're behind the chains. Second and long right now. Well, we saw Strauss on that crossing pattern, Dave, on the replay, though, going towards the far side boundary, and he was wide open. And going into double coverage, it'll bring up a second and ten. Quick stop route. I was just talking about, and he's got it right at the marker. In fact, he's got a first down by about a yard. You know, he's, he's another big receiver, even though he's a true freshman, he's six foot three, a couple hundred pounds. I mean, another big bodied guy. He just finds himself in a little pit, a little uh, curl route. Yards after catch. I mean, immediately when he caught the football, he pivoted the right way to the sideline and squared his pads up and get up the football field for extra yards. And most importantly, got two hands on the football and protected it because it was trying to be ripped out of there, stripped out of there by Banks. Close to field goal range already, Iowa. 12 minutes to play in the half, leading 7 to 3. And through the progression, Wecker circling out of the backfield. Gives the quarterback about five yards. Jesse Smith wrapping up the running back. Wally Burnham is blitzing a little bit more than was anticipated by Ken O'Keefe, the coordinator. He looked at 400 snaps of what, what, what Burnham did in, in, in the past and against formations like Iowa State is going to run. And, you know, they. They just, their blitz pattern is a little bit more today. Just a little bit more. See a change in breaking tendencies a little bit. It'll be second and five. Drive has started back. The Hawkeye is 31. Wegner making a mess. Boy, for a true freshman, didn't run himself out of the play. That's some patience, Dave. That little stutter step. Smith yep. gets him in the secondary. Nice little, nice little spin move to, to get some extra yards. Iowa very, very physical at the offensive line. And, and look at look at the block on the perimeter by our man. Oyaki doing a good job. As he sustains that block, washes it by, one-on-one -on -one in space. Not a bad play, though, to come up in space like that. And Cedric Johnson makes a very, very sure tackle, a very sure hit. Good effort by a lot of people on that play. Well, you talked about the offensive line. The first eight up front for Iowa combined for 108 starts. So they do have experience with the big guys. Well, they lost a lot of it, though, with Kalaga not in the game. On the roll, firing and out of the reach of Cheney. Pretty quick throw, though, on a run by Stanzi. No doubt. Stanzi, big, strong arm quarterback. He can make all the throws. And, you know, the naked bootleg is a, is a, a staple for the Iowa football team. When they start to run the football, they, they naked the other way. Iowa receivers are, are big, but they don't have a whole lot of speed. So the Iowa State cornerbacks are kind of squatting on the routes. Even, a, even double moves, I don't think they're really, really fearful of. I think they feel like they have enough speed to close. So the key for Iowa is to take advantage of their size because Iowa State's not fearful of the speed. Leonard Johnson with a good time in the play. Wegger on the slight delay. Didn't fool Iowa State. Stayed at home. And only a gain of about two or three. It'll bring up third down. And they are fired up. The coaching staff oh. on the far side. Coach the Rhodes Iowa is State. on the field. Yes, the Iowa State <laughs> bench. Man, they're after it over there. Oyaki trying to get involved, and he's doing just staying down the football field, finishing his blocks, and everybody's taking a shot at him. He's not gonna, he's not gonna back down. Well, this is a tough kid. He's from the island of Tonga, and uh, I tell you that he's, he's not gonna back away from any kind of a physical activity. That's for sure. Will the drive be alive after this snap? Third and eight. Pocket holds up for Stanzi. Too tall. Wow. Over Oyaki, and intercepted by Sims, going the other way. Does he get a block down the sideline? Out of bounds. Cyclones get it back. Moyaki was there, but it was too high. Yes, it was. Moyaki would have had to been Shaquille O'Neal to catch that football, and that ball just sailed on Stanzi, his second interception of the game. And last year, Stanzi with Sean Green pretty much had to manage the game, make sure he didn't lose the game. Now he's going to have to make some plays to win the game. And Oyaki separates. He's there. He's available, but the ball just is way high. Stanzi just, the release point is not there for him. And that's a gift. That's gift, gift wrapped. And right there, Sim says, I'll take advantage. Appreciate the opportunity. 
short field in position to score at least a field goal. Huge takeaway right there. Not only the interception, but the return getting the ball back out to the 45-yard line. Jeremiah Schwartz taking over the backfield. Get back to David Sims in just a moment. Now, Arnott, man, if the linebacker, Anger, turns around, he's got an interception going the other way. But he was just, he was shadowing. He was tracking. The receiver down the seam, Darius Reynolds. Back to Sims, though. What a start to his Iowa State career. He had a pick in his debut last week. He's a transfer from Butte Community College. He's got two already today. So in basically six quarters of football, he has three interceptions. This young man who originally signed with Oklahoma right, right. before he went to the JC. 5'9, 208 pounds with great speed. Another physical specimen. Arnott, slow beginning for him, waiting for the slant. The defensive back Ooh. dropped and almost got it. Arian Claiborne, yeah, good that, read. That was his own blitz. That's just dialing up the right call. Norm Parker says, I'm going to zone blitz and drop him off. And he just separates and almost makes a tremendous play. I mean, that's just a great effort. Claiborne is, is a 280 pound guy with innate athletic ability, as we just saw there. As good as it was for Arnod last week, a struggle so far this week. He's 5 of 13 for only 23 yards. They ran the ball in the first two series pretty successfully. Arnod included. They've gotten away from that. Empty backfield to have to now on third and 10. Pressure. And will they get to the marker? No. As Williams hang, or Hamilton rather, hangs on. But he shortened the first down by a couple of yards at the 47 of the Hawks. It wasn't a blitz. It was just a nice little twist stunt up front by the Iowa defensive line. They ran a little crossing action between defensive tackle and, and defensive end. Watch what, watch what goes on up here with the defense. And they run a little uh, tackle end stunt. And, and having a pretty good uh, sequence right there is, is Claiborne. Are you sure Mike Leach isn't on that sideline for Iowa State? <laughs> on fourth and two, Arnod, will he even take the snap or try to get him offside? Yeah, he's trying to make him jump. Doing the little hard count. They let the clock play clock expire. I don't think they'll take a timeout. I think they'll just let the play clock expire. But they did take the timeout. Didn't need to. That's interesting. 8.56 to play. The first, though, of the first half. Hawkeyes ready to get it back after they turned it over. When we return to Ames. The 57th edition of the Cyhawk Showdown. And welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, and Jim Knox. Perfect day for football. It'll be a punting situation after our direct TV game summary. And as you look at the numbers for Ricky Stancy, well, his wide receivers and tight ends can't say that he's playing favorites. Seven different receivers out of his 10 completions. So he spread the ball around. Now that we can just find them a little more often. Yeah, he's well, had two picks. Right, that's the problem. Pressure. And oh, wow. They got him, but they got him late, and they graze Brantner. No flag. Well, was, was, well, they blocked into Brantner. That's the key. There, there was a wall of three Iowa State Cyclones in front of them, and if, if they were instrumental in the Iowa guys making the contact, let's see. They were. They were. It was. It was part of the blocking action, and they. Ran right by him. That's that's a pretty good acting job. I mean, that's an Academy Award winning job right there. The, the, not able to get his hand on the football. I'm not sure how much contact was made. The official ruled no go. Just play on. We also look at the game summary. Don't forget, the Hawkeyes have had some solid field position. In fact, they went three and out in a punt when they started in Iowa State territory. Nothing doing, trying to turn the corner. Adam Robinson and a late flag out of the secondary. Sims in on that stop. You know, the one thing that has hurt Iowa State in the first quarter in a half of this football game is penalties. After the first quarter, they had five penalties for 37 yards, 20 of those coming on the touchdown drive by Iowa. It was the personal foul, which really put Iowa in great shape, and they finished it for a 81. touchdown. 81. Holding. Offense number 81. 10 yards. Moyaki. Yep. Big boy on the edge. Moyaki is a very versatile guy. We talked about it. He's like a, you know, you have to almost be a hybrid. You have to block like a third tackle one snap. The next snap, you have to run down the field like a wide receiver, run around and catch the football. Well, I asked Kirk Ferentz yesterday more about Moyaki because he played hurt last year. He said he really is a tough kid. In fact, Moyaki missed four with a broken bone in his foot, still came back, played hurt, uh, had only 30 game catches on the season. So 10 last week, 13 all of last year. They slide the other tight end, Reisner into the backfield. 
protection to Stanzi and over the shoulder, Ooh. just out of the reach of Struss. Nice job in coverage right there, pressing the sideline was Banks, using the sideline as a 12th defender. He, he did an excellent job from a technique standpoint. Now, when you're when you're at the sideline, you no, know, trust your eyes. And, and he's really there's no no face guarding in college football. In the NFL, that's illegal. But you can face guard in college football, and that was just an outstanding effort. Realizing that he could press into the sideline, he could tell by reading the receiver's eyes the ball was on its way. Get the right arm up to be an obstruction. Still a seven to three lead for the Hawkeyes, but deep in their own territory, second and long. Stanzi trying to buy some time in trouble. Face and mask. Yeah, it's a face mask. Yeah. It's intercepted, but it's coming back anyway. Lyle got him for the face mask. The interception picked up by Leonard Johnson, a freshman All-American last year, but it's still going to be the Hawkeyes ball. And again, penalties crop up and invite Iowa State. This one's huge. Yeah, Lyle's just hustling. Ooh. Personal foul. That's been faced by the defense. Lyle's just trying to uh, trying to make a play and grabbing at anything he can grab at, but the one thing you can't grab is the grill. And you and you see Lyle, left hand uh, on the grill, got the index finger basically and yanks it. Just to, you have to if he had released, but you know there's no more. Five or 15, it's almost like it, it, it's either a face mask penalty or it's not. And that one was an obvious face mask penalty that has to be called. One index finger, one pinky away from being clean on the play. Well, Lyle with a big play in the 2007 game, blocking a field goal, a 15 13 away. Ball start. Early movement, left guard. Ball start. Ball start. Offense, number 78, five yards, the down remains first. Ace Richardson, the senior from Wheaton, Illinois. He's uh, recovering from injury as well, but he was very, very early on the snap count. You know what, Dace, you got to get that pad level lower. You can't stand up like that. You, know, you have to come off the line of scrimmage after people with a low pad level and bend at those knees. Don't bend at the waist. So now first and 15, take it back to the 20. Not been in the old end of the field all that often today. Yeah. It was the big man again, Lyle, who I just talked about. He made big plays in the 2007 fifth block of an Iowa field goal attempt. In a two-point win, that was huge. And now he drops him for a loss. First down line brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% off. Brand names every day at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. And, and you know, Joel, when you're a senior and you realize it's your last rivalry game, Lyle's a senior. He knows this is the final time he's taking this stage. You want to play as well as you can in your last big, big game against Iowa. And he's, he's given up it. So now second and real long. Oh, and overthrown again. Again, wide open Johnson Corianos. Hmm. And that's just a breakdown defensively for Iowa State. You talk about breaking the breaks for the Cyclones. Well, Stanley overthrew one, and, and that overthrow was, was capitalized by Sims. He overthrows Moyaki, and, and the interception occurs. This one, check it out. I mean, it is there. It is wide open on a little underneath crossing route. There's nobody within 10 yards of him. I mean, that's just a little pitch and catch. And, boy, he just his release point's too high. He's just letting that ball go, and it's sailing on him. Now Stanzi after the miss 10 of 22. One thing that uh, Kirk Ferentz and, and uh, Ken O'Keefe the offensive coordinator right there realizes that Stanzi when things go poorly he has a he has a way of recovering and coming back and making plays. Let's see if he recovers from this little slump of inaccuracy. Late clock down timeout Hawkeyes when we come back with 638 left in the half. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox back in Ames, Iowa on a classic day in the upper Midwest. Game time temperature in the mid 70s. No threat of rain until late this afternoon, so it's looking real good. Local time right now at about 25 after 12. Early kick, and now any kick left in Iowa late in the first half, deep in their own territory on a third and long. Lead it by four, seven to three. Stanzi just overshooting his targets, so Morse, the fullback, 
weaving his way into the secondary. Flag coming down, a holding call, working against one of the offensive line, maybe the center, 52, Raphael Eubanks. Yeah, he was working on Frere, and Frere got penetration. Eubanks took him to the turf. That's going to cost him 10. He didn't get the you decline it. He didn't get the first down. During the play, holding 52 offense. The penalty is declined. Four foul. So deep start at their own 20, and now a punt coming up. They got one first down. That was by way of penalty on the face mask after the ball had been picked off by Leonard Johnson. But it was a face mask on the quarterback. So going back deep, once again, it'll be Josh Lynn. Stanzi has an interception taken away with the face mask, but then overthrows DJK. A tough series for Stanzi. Donahue, good punt. Yeah, he really turns this one. It'll be Lenz at the 15. And he can't make the first man miss with a flag down the play. Great coverage by the Hawkeyes. And the first one down there is Bavay. Who works special teams the other way on returns as well. 57 yards, the punt. And a beauty for Ryan Donahue, the junior from Evergreen Park, Illinois. And Micah Hyde, another freshman, number 18 in the white jersey, was involved there. The flag was away Return from the player. The block in the back. Returning team number 23. Half the distance to the ball. First down. It'll be a deep start. A long field coming up at the Cyclones when we return to Ames with 6.08 left in the half. And the Hawkeyes up by four. <laughs> Thank you, Darren, and welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Going to be outside of the seven for the Cyclones. Let's see if they can run the football like they did earlier in the game. Now, last year, Iowa State had only 73 yards on the ground against the Hawkeyes defense, one of the best in the nation, though. Fifth in the nation, in fact, in points allowed, giving him over 13 of contest. Spinning free, making a miss. Another spin wow. for Alexander Robinson, and he's got a first down. What an individual effort to the 25. A gain of 17. The coaches for Iowa State could not say enough about Robinson. His physical ability, his mental toughness, his intelligence. They said he is a perfect fit for this offense. They asked him to do a lot of things. And look at the vision in the spins. One spin, second spin, just very, very tight. Finds the seam, takes it up the field. He got every inch that he could about of that run. Outstanding effort. He's not a big guy, Dave. He's a bunch four over to the other side. Yeah, yeah. and then run Arnott to the opposite side. And he's put down, and it really wasn't even a tackle. <laughs> it was Claiborne on that side, engaged in a block, or at least somebody trying to block him. Claiborne with that. Yeah. Some pretty good contact right there. You know, penalties, Joel, are killing Iowa State. They've been penalized seven times for 59 yards, penalized only once in last week's game. They're self-destructing with penalties. Second and eight. And the little guy again tripped up. Coming out of the backfield, Alexander Robinson. That time by Broderick Bibbs, but he's tough to get a grip on. I mean, He's 5'9", 190. Kind of gets lost back there, doesn't he? He hides behind that big offensive line. We talked about the offensive line. They're tall, they're broad, they're thick, they're everything. You know, their biggest group in college football, average size-wise, and at 5'9", he hides behind them, and all of a sudden, boom, he appears out of nowhere, and you can't really even uh, focus to find him. He's got nine carries for 57 yards after the last. They only need about three for first down. And a poor throw and an interception. Sash has another. The strong safety on the deflection. Still on his feet all the way down to the 25 near the 24. Well, they needed three and a low percentage throw deflected by Greenwood. Yeah, Greenwood got his hands on the football. The old tip drill is paying off for both of these football teams. And Ar Arnott trying to force it, but boy, it, 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 I mean, he looked like, Greenwood looked like he was the intended receiver. Once he tipped it, he said, somebody, somebody pay this off, and Sash did. Sash with a great return. Not only interceptions, but the return yardage is staggering. And he did, Sash did a nice job of hurling Arnott, tried to take him out low. He, he hurled, him, hurled him like Edward Moses out there and, and kept his balance. This is the third time the Hawkeyes have started in Cyclone territory. They should be up by more than seven to three. Cyclone's very fortunate. Wagner, the true freshman, going backwards for a couple of extra. It's five on first down, down to the 24, but when you consider they've started at the Cyclones 34 and didn't get a point out of it. Went three and out with a punt. 
Now, after the second pick of the day by Tyler Sash, he sets him up at the 24. They finally did get into the end zone when they had it off the onside kick at the 41. And that was because of 20 yards and penalties that Iowa uh, State gave them. I mean, Iowa State had the personal foul out of bounds, the five-yard penalty on the onside kick. 20 of those yards were gift. Iowa State self-destructed, penalty, turnover. It, it's amazing that it's only 7-3. The defense has responded. At 34, you see the number out of the last 35. Stanzi on the dump off to Morris. And what an open field tackle by James Smith, who's come up big a couple of times early today, the senior from Council Bluffs, Iowa. Iowa is winning the field position battle, the turnover battle, the penalties. They should be uh, taking more advantage. And that was basically the play they scored the touchdown on. It was the same play action pass getting the fullback out in the edge, out in the perimeter, and it's worked for him two times. I mean, Morris has two catches on that exact same look. One of them is the game leading touchdown right now in a 73 football game. Well, they have to settle for a field goal. Charge. It's third and four, almost five. Stands out of the gun. Here comes the blitz, and he's going on the fade of the corner. Touchdown. He got a push. No flag. Touchdown, Johnson Corianos. EJK got it done. He had the position on Banks, and he's hurting. EJK is in the corner of the end zone with some sort of an effort, uh, some sort of an injury, and what an effort if he, in fact, was hurt. They got their legs tangled up because limping as well as Banks. I mean, they must have got their legs tangled up somehow when they went to the field to play after the play was made. Both, team, both players are suffering from injury, and they're both in, in very bad shape right now. One's on his back and one's got a six point stance going on hands and knees. Kulianos with two hands and a little space created at the end. Yeah, he, he, he gets the, he <laughs> does get the push off and, and often OPI offensive pass interference was not called. There's the separation and, and, a, and let's see where, where, where's the injury. I mean, he, did he fall? I, I thought he fell on the football initially, but his legs, he twists his legs up and. and and, and, and they both tangle their legs up and jam their ankles into the turf. I, I don't know. I think it's lower lower extremity injuries that, that hopefully won't be too severe. Did a great job to cradle it though. Even though he was in pain, you could tell. Keep his hand under the ball. So yeah. there was no doubt it was a catch. You could see the pain the other way on Kennard Banks. Yeah, Banks is hurting as well. He seems to be limping even more. But you have to give Stanzi credit. I mean, when the opportunity presents itself, he does seem to be able to have amnesia, forget the bad plays, the bad throws, the overthrows, the interceptions, and make a play to, to help his football team. And stands he's done it over the course of his career. And you know, Ferris was telling us that on the conference call how in Penn State and other big games, he's done exactly that. He doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, just compartmentalizes and moves on to the next play. Yeah, Kirk Ferris said he really deals with adversity very well. Right. Murray in for the point after. And they capitalize off the turnover. It's a short field started at the 24 of the Cyclones after the pick, the second of the day by Tyler Sash. And locked up with the defender, Kulianos comes down with it. Touchdown reception by Daryl Johnson Kulianos, who led the Hawkeyes in catches last year. And it puts the Hawks up now 14 to 3 over the Cyclones. We head down to Jim Knox. All right, Joe, coming up on the Geico halftime report. We'll end the student to a Darian Horton. He'll go over top 25 stores and highlights also Tim Tebow and Florida. What's coming up next, guys? Go Geico halftime show! Oh, Joel and Dave, you need any hair, Joe? This guy's got you covered right here. That's strong, Noxie. That's strong. I don't have enough hair for that gel. Uh, yeah, I was about to say I need hair. Forget yeah, about the gel. Absolutely. <laughs> 2.56 left of the half. And the line drive. It is going to be Leonard Johnson. One of the best in the nation last year. So a true freshman. This time, good coverage. Coming over to the near side of the Hawkeyes guys at about the 22. Was well, there a push off? Yeah, let's take a look at DJK, the route he runs here, and watch him push with two hands on Banks, right in the smush, right in the face mask. And Banks' problem is never turns to find the ball. He's in good position. He never knows where the football is. All he's doing is face guarding the receiver. And I think DJK honestly fell on the football and lost his breath. Looked like, you know, the mouthpiece got spit out immediately. And I think he's in better shape than Banks. I think Banks definitely has a foot or an ankle problem, but DJK seems to be okay. He got away with a few things there. Boston Arna. Having problems at 6 of 15. The running back, Robinson, off the left side for about five, up to the 27. Anger brings him down. 
First one. Back to Arnaud. He had a big day last week. Granted, it was North Dakota State, but right now, 6 of 15 for 31 yards, but picked off twice. And uh, Iowa's defense will, will do that to you. Norm Parker, eight starters return. They play sound, fundamental football. They know where to be and where how to get there, and they play fast. He'll keep it himself this time, and he's got the first down. And we saw that over the first couple of series, and it was effective. Yeah. Greenwood, they got away from it, though, and then started putting the ball up. In the first quarter, Arnott averaged over five yards a carry, as did the running backs. And this is what, when he's dangerous, you know, how many times do you want to run him, though? I mean, fearful of during the course of the season, so many carries, you may be having to open up a new can of quarterbacks. You have to make sure that you keep your quarterback healthy because he's definitely their number one guy. That's a dicey deal making that decision. On the play fake. Going deep and under pressure. Coming back and recognizing the situation. Hamilton on the ground. D back that time was not aware. Yeah, always underthrown football. Defensive back Spive does not find the football. Receiver Hamilton says, I see this one. And obviously the receiver sees the football well before the defensive back. But all the defensive backs are face guarding. They're playing the receivers well. They're in position. But they're not getting their head snapped around at all to find the ball. 26 yards. That was the longest one. Well, and then a hookup with Hamilton. So first down to the Hawkeyes 40. Final two minutes of the first half. Wild beginning with back to back interceptions and both teams have one guy with two picks apiece. It's Tyler Sash and David Sims going to the bundle up the grabs again. Third interception. It's Brett Greenwood. What a poor throw that time. Yeah. They're both quarterbacks the ball sailing. I don't know if it's perspiration from the humidity or what, but I mean the ball's just not coming out of their hand very darn well at all. And the balls are just floating and sailing down the football there field. Was overthrow, Dave's overthrow. There was good coverage. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. He's throwing into real good coverage. I mean the percentages of, of making this play in your favor are small. And you, you put your team in jeopardy when you you're trying to throw underneath to Hamilton. And you have help over the top. Anytime the ball is is thrown deep, you know it's going to be picked off. It's an easy play. Both teams are playing zone defenses, and, and safeties are just back there playing, you know, center field, picking off fly ball after fly ball. Some of the throws, they're thinking about fair catching. They're just hanging up there. So it's back at the three. Man, Hawkeyes got a timeout on uh, their first and ten with a minute 47 to play. Now, if you're Iowa. You say, let's just pound it and not take a chance on turning it over back here. You, you have a two-score lead now. Yes, and it, yes, and yes. Right. So I don't, I don't think you do anything silly. I think Iowa State is going to try to rip the football out of there. You know, maybe if, if you're Iowa, you're being told two hands on the football. Ball security is imperative right now. And if you're Iowa State, they're talking to each other right now. The defensive players, hey, let's rip it out of there. Let's 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 turn it over and get that short field score. You know, this is a trade of a Kirk Ferentz team. They start slow, they finish fast, and they get ready, and they usually win their bowl games too. So they're in good shape right now with a minute 47 to play. Well, next week, college football Saturday, triple header. Tulsa taking on Oklahoma. We will be there, Dave. Cincinnati, Oregon State, the Big 12, Pac 10, Kansas State facing off at UCLA. As it's out across the five, it'll be a second and long. Only one time on the board for the Cyclones. They made a mistake on one of those two timeouts they've used. It's the triple header. I'm talking about Dave. We'll start it all off in Norman. And you can see Landry Jones, a new quarterback for the Sooners. And boy, they lost Grisham, their tight end. So, number of things uh, to adjust for the Sooners. Cincinnati, Oregon State, Kansas State, UCLA. UCLA with a big one today on the road. It all starts at 3 30 Eastern. Two tight ends. Presented by Phillips HD. Two tight ends, two backs. They're just going to run that quarterback uh, wedge they ran on the first snap. Now so they get it to the fullback. Yeah. So would you. Yeah, yeah no reason to uh, take any chances here and and let, let it just yes. melt away. Play uh, play high percentage football. And Jesse Smith and Kirk Ferentz does that as well as anybody. And, and you talked about the mistakes already by the Cyclones. They've given it away three times on interceptions. Seven penalties for 59 yards. Don't beat yourself. Kirk Ferentz has got a lot of experience. He's not going to do that. Well, we talked about in the rivalry in, in any football game, but rivalry, the bigger all these things are, special teams, field position, you know, is a big deal. Turnovers, penalties, uh, who plays the clean game, who makes the big play, avoids the big mistakes. So far, Iowa State's hurting themselves. Yeah. Will they get the first down? Yep. 
into the secondary. That'll do it for the half. Adam Robinson across the 22 if the Cyclones even thought about using their final timeout for a punt return. And, and Iowa State has to realize that Iowa is good enough to win the game on their own. They don't have to put themselves on their schedule today as well. You know, just attack Iowa. Don't kill yourself by shooting yourself in the foot so many times. It, it makes it a climb of Mount Everest when you do that. So Iowa's only outgained of 171 to 151 in total net yards offensively, but the story of the mistakes and especially the struggle of Austin Arno. Uh, he's 7 of 17, been picked off three times, only 57 yards. We head downstairs to Jim Knox. Not uh, seen. Thank you, Joe. Coach, you got to be pleased. Your defense really pitching shutout, keeping Iowa State out of the end zone, and one of the keys, three turnovers. Yeah, our defense has done a great job of the turnovers. That's helped us uh, significantly, and we need to tighten a few things up, but the turnovers have been big. I appreciate the time. Thank Coach, you. best thank luck you. in the second half. Right now, let's head to the Geico Halftime Show. We're at halftime. Iowa leading Iowa State 14-3. Darren Horton, take it away, Darren. Welcome back once again as we continue with the showdown for the Cyhawk Trophy 57th edition. Well, Iowa State has taken seven of the last 11, but right now looking pretty good for the Hawkeyes halfway through this 57th go, go around. 14 3 right now. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lappin. It's very rare when you can say that you've seen five interceptions in the game, let alone five interceptions in 30 minutes of play. It has been that sloppy. Mistakes, a lot of mistakes, mental and physical mistakes, and uh, that's been the story of the football game. Iowa has made fewer. That's what it boils down to. Time now for our Geico's eyes on the second half. And uh, my eyes, Joel, are on miscues. You know, I mean, the quarterbacks, they've tried to force passes into coverage. That isn't really there. There's been tip balls. The safeties for Iowa have been unbelievable. Sash has two interceptions. Greenwood has three. They're just playing deep zone coverage, and they are just standing back there like a center fielder. Picking the football off and uh, the E Harmony halftime stats. Turnovers, three interceptions for Iowa State, two for Iowa. Ricky Stanzi's not lighting it up either. The other big key, look at Iowa State, the bottom right hand number. Seven penalties, 59 yards. They have self destructed with turnover and penalty, and as a result, lost field position, Joel, and, and are trailing by 11. Yeah, like what Kirk Perrin said, they got to clean some things up, even though they were up on his way out. Talking to Jim Knox. Knoxie, what's the latest downstairs? Are right, you guys talking about turnovers? That's exactly what Paul Roll told me at halftime. You got to limit those turnovers. He also said he told the team, don't press. We got to execute. He says, we're going to see an entirely different team here in the second half. We'll wait and see on that. Now, guys, also, as the day goes on, it's starting to get warmer and warmer on this field. You got to hydrate. We'll see if anyone comes up cramping, big guy. You know what that's all about. Yeah, Knox. It's almost too late now. They should have been taking care of it during the week. You're right. Leonard Johnson wanted to bring it out. Sims said stay right there on the line drive for Murray. So the Cyclones will have it to start the second half. And let's see if, as Paul Rhodes said, you'll see a different team. Let's see if they clean it up. The three picks of Arnau. And also the seven penalties for 59 yards and assessments. Well, I think what they need to do, look at the running game. Run the football. They're averaging over five yards a carry, over six yards a carry for Robinson, over five yards a carry for Arnott. It's, it's a two-score game. Don't abandon the running game. Get back in the football game. Make it a one-score game. Robinson in the backfield with Arnott. Quick one for Reynolds. Bobble it. Hangs on, though. And gets about five up to the 25. The Cyclones did not have a real advantage field position wise early in the game. They're a little bit better late in the game or late in the first half at least, but not a pretty drive chart. Well, when you have three interceptions in seven possessions, that's uh, that's tough. That's a tough dynamic. And, you know, one of the keys was end every possession with a kick. It didn't quite happen that way for Iowa State. They have to clean it up, avoid the big mistake, and make a few big plays. But as you said, they only had one penalty last week. They won. They were plus one in turnover ratio. Quick toss and the first down across the 30. So they come out, run a little option action on second and five. And Robinson's got it brought down by Ben. I like it. I, Iowa State is going to the running game. I mean, that's what they did well in the first half. And you know, if, if Iowa starts to have to respect the run game, those safeties, they're, they're playing cover two. The, both those safeties are too deep. You see him back here. There's one, and the one's deeper than that. They'll have to start hugging the line of scrimmage. Get it to the running back again. Yeah. Little guy, 5'9", about 190, 195. Chugs it past the 35, up to the 36. Tough to bring down. Tyler Sash got him. Tyler Sash, Tyler Sash had the first half of his life. Five tackles, two interceptions. A tackle for loss. Big time production in that safety spot. 
call the play at the line after he gets the signals from the sideline. And a nice little crease for Arnott, but it closes in a hurry. Bins wrapped him up after he slowed down with initial penetration. They just overload that side of the line of scrimmage with the wing back and, and, and try to hammer Iowa. And it, that, that is the only way that you're going to be able to play action pass over the top on Iowa is to establish that ground attack. They only need two, a little more than two. So on third down, keep it to the ground, run the option, wide side of the field. Robinson's got it oh, and loses it. Another one, give it away. It's covered. Jeremiah Hunter, I believe, or will it be Ed's? Jeremiah Hunter coming up with the football. I think Sash might have been involved in forcing the fumble. Sash There's seems to be everywhere. Down. Against Iowa State, that's play, the play. Chop block, 73 offense. Penalty is declined. First time. Well, if you're a center, you cannot uh, chop low with a guard. And it was Sash that put his helmet, his shoulder pad right on the football. What a game that young man is having. Two interceptions, a forced fumble, six tackles. He has been dynamic on the football field for Iowa. So Hunter, the uh, co-special teams player of the week of the Big Ten. As he saved it on that second consecutive block, the first time that's ever happened in Division One history. He was on top of the situation there. Sash forces it. Hunter gets it. And now the other Robinson heads to the sideline. And Adam Robinson, Robinson the redshirt freshman Iowa. from Des Moines, with good yardage on first down. Brought down by Parker. Let's take a look at the NCAA record back to back field goal blocks. Right up the middle. Kicker, very, very low trajectory. And the ball is blocked, and that's uh, that's the initial block by Bins. Now, making the mistake and not getting the football right there, like he should have, was the man who blocks the field goal to end up winning the football game. That's none other than Jeremiah Hunter. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, so you have to pick the football up because it didn't cross the line of scrimmage. Northern Iowa had another shot at it. It'll be second and close to five for Robinson. And weaving his way up the middle close to a first down. So this is the fourth time that the Cyclones have started in plus territory. Or rather, the Hawkeyes have started in Cyclone territory as we look at the first 30 minute leaders for Iowa. Well, Ricky Stanzi only 50% completion. He's overthrown some receivers, but he does have two interceptions, but it's offset with the two touchdowns. He has made a couple of positive plays. You know, the, the, that's the difference. Arnod has no touchdown passes and three interceptions, so. Quarterback position battle has been won basically by Stanty at this point. Made less than a yard on third down. Robinson, big gap over to the right side. He's got blockers. And into the secondary, Adam Robinson. Finally brought down by David Sims for safety. And really, Iowa enjoying great field position with the turnovers and the penalties. And Iowa, nothing fancy here. Look at the the, the pancake block by Moyaki right here. He just takes him to the turf, and everybody is sustaining blocks. They're fitting and they're finishing blocks down the football field. Offensive linemen hustling. Boy, Iowa smells it right now. They get they get a, another turnover, a fumble recovery, short field. They want to finalize. They want to put it in the end zone. They've been in the red zone twice today. They've got two touchdowns. They've been in the red zone four times in the season. They have four touchdowns. Almost four minutes gone by in the third. Will it be points off a turnover again? Stanzi wide of Moyaki, almost to Sims again. That would have been his third pick, so it was between McNutt and tight end Moyaki. Let's take a look at what what Iowa was able to get accomplished. You know, they had uh, a couple of interceptions and in their eight possessions of the football. They had just three plays right before halftime to run the clock out, but the big difference, instead of uh, turnovers and one field goal, you see touchdowns on the board there on their fourth and, and seventh possession, uh, uh, fifth and seventh possession of the, of the half. That's the difference in the football game. They had a 10-play drive. That's really the only sustained block drive of the game. Have been only one double digit drive for either football team playing. Second and 10 from the 22. Good pocket protection again for Stancy. And now he's trying to get anything he can out of it. Inside the 20, down over the 19, a gain of three on the scramble. Met by Parker and Benton. And it's not to put it on one guy, but if Stancy has any kind of game going right now, as opposed to 12 for 25 with two picks, and we just saw him miss Moyaki, who was wide again right. to his tight end. This isn't a game. It's probably 28 to 3. 
Yeah, and, and if Arnaud had not tried to force the ball too much, I think he was trying to do too much. You know, we, we were told during the uh, course of the week, Tom Herman said that you know, he has a tendency of, of pressing a little bit, getting too geeked up. And maybe maybe he was trying to do too much in this football game. You have to settle down and let the game come to you. So now it's going to be third and long. Stanzi on the quick out. He's got the first down at about the 10. The completion over to Johnson Cumianos, who had a touchdown in the first half, two and a half to play in the first half. Pulled it off on the true freshman from Allen, Texas, working against Jeremy Reeves. JK with a good good play right here. And he's fully recovered. I think he just, just did get the wind knocked out of him on that touchdown reception that he had. Okay. He presents himself as a big, big viable target. There's no doubt about that. You know, Iowa, we've talked about the size of their receiver core. He doesn't have the height, but everybody's over 200 pounds. He's 6'1", 200. Slide Reisner, the tight end, go the other way with Robinson, the running back. And this is where the play gets about three down to the seven. You know, today it's not about here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. It's here to you, Mr. Robinson. They've got uh, Robinson at the running back for both, both football teams, and they 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 are both both very very solid and effective. Other than the fumble, which is huge, because this is why I was knocking on the doorstep right now by Iowa State's Mr. Robinson. They played a pretty effective football game. Adam Robinson who sets up in the single behind stands. He's got almost seven carry, eight for 54 thus far. Look to the tight end, the motion man, and Reisner's got it. Touchdown, Iowa. Iowa State, you have two members of the secondary falling all over each other, literally. You know, they, they went down to the turf. James Smith, he, he, he ended up falling right over Leonard Johnson. As they're trying to decipher the coverage, look it out here. Boom, 2 and 23. They play pile on top of each other. And if you talk about a pick, it wasn't even a, a real big pick. They're in man coverage, and they're crisscrossing, and, and they collide. And as a result of that collision, Reisner unfolds for the big play. Yeah, but when we talk about a pick play, it's usually. <laughs> yeah, it's usually somebody else, the right. opponent. And they picked each other up. <laughs> Murray for the point after. And it's now an 18 point lead for the Hawkeyes. Well, they've been in the red zone three times this afternoon, and Iowa's got three touchdowns. Five times on the year, five touchdowns. Red zone execution. Well, it's going to be interesting to see over the next hour and a half if Iowa State can take care of the football and also kind of change things direction-wise, momentum-wise. They'll get it back after the touchdown. Reisner, the eight different target today for Stancy. So Stancy, 14 of 27, not awful numbers, but he's picked off twice as it will stay inbounds for Leonard Johnson at about the six yard line. Take it out to the 22. The Cyclones. Well, we talked about the head coach who made his debut with a win last week, Paul Rhodes, a guy that was born just 10 miles from here. He knows about Iowa State football. I can remember standing outside of the Olsen building when, uh, when the great running backs of the Big Eight, Thurman Thomas and, and, and that group would, would walk out of the locker room and standing there looking up at them. I can remember walking out in the end zone in the south end of the field and, and playing on the turf when the game was over and, and the cleanup crew was out working and, and blowing their fans. So uh, I, I can't limit myself to one or two. I've got a lot of fond memories of Jack Trice Stadium and Cyclone football. He was born in Nevada, which is 10 miles from here, played at Ankeny High School. Arno had him inside. Arnod, rather, had him inside. It goes outside over the head, the long shoulder of Cedric Johnson and Dan McCartney. There's a young Paul yeah. Rhodes right there. He was 95 to 99. And he was, uh, there's Dan right there, and he was number one in his class in high school as well. I mean, Rhodes is a, is a very, very articulate. I think he's in, in energy, enthusiasm. He, he relates well to young people. He's going to recruit well. I think it's a good choice for Iowa State. So Arnod. 8 of 19 after the miss with three picks. 
Nothing doing once again. This time is Jeremiah Schwartz. Jim Knox, what's going on on the sideline? It's our free credit report.com sideline report. Knoxie? Yeah, just continuing on with Paul Rhodes. He played safety at high school at Ankeny High School. Also, the uh, 125 graduating classes, as Dave mentioned, he was valedictorian. And his father on the sidelines, very proud. Cecil, Cecil Rhodes right here. you got to be extremely proud of your son. Well, very much so, and he'll get the job done given time. There we go. You know, this isn't a springboard for Coach Rhodes. This is something he'll be here for a long, long time and trying to turn Iowa State around, guys. Yeah. yeah, Jim, it's a good fit is what it is. He knows the environment. He's got a feel for the culture of Iowa State football. And wow. what a job by the wide receiver as Darius Reynolds that time a little bit too much east-west and not enough north-south, but he made a miss and got a first down. Yeah, sometimes when you try to do too much, you know, you, you spit the bit, you, you give the ball up a little bit, but he did a pretty good job of protecting the football, even though he was taking pop after pop. He made quite a few Iowa defenders miss, but look at all the white jerseys that were pursuing the football. Nobody on the ground, everybody running for the ball. That's what Iowa defense is all about. Only the ninth first down of the game. The seven minutes gone here in the third. Ninth first down for Iowa State. Low snap for Arnott. And what he does so well, out of the pocket, Trying to rip the football away. The keeper. Christian Batter, the tackle. What can he run? 6'5", 285 for a, a down lineman. He's special. So it's going to be second and short. Shop at the company that supports college football. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Arnott into the secondary. Will is missing the first down. Inside the 45, down to the 44, another first down. Brought down by Brett Greenwood. See, I think the, the quarterback run package has been very, very effective. He said it a few times when he has a back to his on his hip. That's a two-back set because Arnaud's a good running back. I mean, he's good lugging the pig. There's no question about it. Quick one. It'll be Reynolds. And an alert play. There was nothing available inside. He goes outside and makes the most of it, about four or five yards. You know, a quick note on Paul Rhodes' dad, Cecil, high school coach in the state of Iowa for over 30 years. He's in the Hall of Fame. So Paul Rhodes' DNA is all about football. You know, his dad, Cecil, is uh, is big time in these parts. Well, there's no question he's going to get it together after you see what he did and his resume. Defensive coordinator at Auburn last year, previous eight years, defensive coordinator at Pitt. Yep. Four of those eight, they were in the top ten in total defense. He was a uh, distinguished defensive coordinator, highly acclaimed, highly respected. Option action. And young man, the redshirt freshman from Orlando Schwartz, tied up by Tyler Sachs, who's had a sensational game with already a couple of interceptions you know, and forced a fumble. We talk about Iowa's defense, and again, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator, has coordinated this uh, team for 11 seasons. And he is fundamentally sound in his approach. And his players all understand it. If you're not technique sound, if you don't play fundamental football, you're not going to play for Norm Parker. And they are just something to watch on the football field, the way they finish every play. Dave, Kirk Ferris told us they lost a lot defensively. Some really solid contributors from last year's squad. They were 12th in total defense. That's in the nation. Up the grabs and intercepted once again. Greenwood's Greenwood got his second. It's across the 40. And a first down for the Hawkeyes to the 42. Well, each of the safeties have a pair of picks now, Sash and Greenwood. And Iowa State's coaches say, you know, that Coach Parker, the defense coordinator, expects a lot out of the safeties. He asked them to do a lot. This time, though, it was an easy read. I mean, he's a free safety. He doesn't have any responsibilities. All Green was doing is reading the eyes of Arnott. And Arnott just loaded it out there. It hung like it's the suspended animation. I mean, it just hung there. And an easy, easy pick for Greenwood. Right now, Arnott's going to be getting to the point where he's feeling he, every time he lets the ball go, it's coming back at him. It's going to be tough to pull the trigger. So Arnott, four picks, 10 of 22, 79 yards. Is where the two freshmen cuts it back against the grain, and he's got a first down. Well, kept him spinning, bent on his back. Wager, 5'11, 205. He looked it pretty well. He really did. And in Iowa State, when you have four interceptions and a fumble, five turnovers, that was one of the big keys of the game. Iowa felt like they had to win the turnover battle. And right now, it's being dominated. We got a new quarterback getting loose, and that's uh, Tiller. Rome Tiller, six foot three inch, 194 pound freshman. 
So first down, clock moving inside of five and a half to play in the third. 18-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Ton of pocket protection and floats it perfectly this time to Strauss. He's got a first and goal inside the 10. One of the best time passes we've seen on the long crossing route in front of David Sims, the safety. Yeah, that's the protection is outstanding. Stands in the pocket, reads the classified ads. Nobody was within five yards of him. Vision totally unimpeded. Just a little pitch and catch. You know, you read zone coverage, and he just continued to run and ran right away from it. Safety could not keep up. Benton. So first and goal at the five. Wagner will stay in there. See if they put the tight end in motion like they did on the last series. No, the run is the strong side. Wagner up the middle and close. He's in. Touchdown, Iowa. Well, I like him. He, he, he smells the end zone. He, he got those shoulder pads low, and he got them squared up to the line of scrimmage. No, east and west with him. North and south. Four penetrations of the red zone. Four touchdowns for Iowa. They are just executing in the red zone. That's where a team starts to impose its will. The offensive line takes control of things. They have a hard running running back. And Iowa is just finishing drives. They're not settling for field goals. I think he might have been short. The ball end up short of the goal line. I think it's being looked at. Well, the, he may the, have bounced in. Did the ball? The ball was in that in that right arm. And, and did, did the ball hit the ground before it crossed the plane? Remember, every play in college football is reviewed. The ball's in the right arm. Let's see where his knee goes down, and there's his left elbow. His body's down, the ball's short. That ball should be marked at the half yard line. It's, it's got to be marked at the half yard line. You can't give him a touchdown on that one. As much as you like him, Dave, you just can't. You just can't do it. Now, you, maybe you give him the ball again, see if he can do it. To, but, you know, he, he, can't, he can't give him the touchdown illegally. His, his body was down before that ball crossed the plane. He did a nice job of extending it, but it was after his entire body's laying on the ground. It shouldn't take this long. But it should come back. They have It'll to decide exactly where to, one. Yeah, exactly where to mark the football. They're trying to get bodies down, left elbows down, ball is short. Ball is definitely short. There's the plane of the goal line. No question, ball is short. They'll probably mark it at about the, you know, inside the one at about the half yard line, three quarter yard line. After further review, the runner's knee was down short of the goal line. The ball will be placed at the one half yard line, second down. We have the Hawkeyes' last win in Ames came in 2003. Cons and I, a couple of blocks, punts, special teams, a big factor in that game, and a 40 21 win. And I know it's early with 442 to play, but it's looking real good for the Hawks. You know, Kirk Ferentz likes to recruit wrestlers as linemen because they have tremendous balance. They're, they're, Knees are over their ankles, the hips are over their knees. This offensive line's playing well right now without their best player. It'll be wacky. This time, no doubt about it. Woo, up and over. Touchdown, Iowa. Up, up and away, and there was no linebacker to meet him, and he was just uh, hurled himself, hurled himself into the end zone. You like his vertical? I like his vertical and horizontal. I mean, <laughs> he, he was, uh, he, he, he wanted this one. I mean, it's like he, he, he took off from about the three or four yard line and ended about three yards deep in the end zone. That's pretty darn good. I mean, that's that's the, the long body jump right there, I guess. The junior from Iowa City, Daniel Murray for the point after. And it's now 28 to three. So points off another turnover as the Cyclones continue to hurt themselves. Hawkeyes capitalize and lead it by 25. 27 left in the third at 28 to 3 lead now. A tough, tough day for Austin Arnow. And time for our Keystone Light Always Smooth moment. Spotlight on Tyler Sash. Yeah, Tyler Sash has been part of the reason it's been such a tough day on Arnaud. I mean, he just tip drill, he's there, he's making plays, he's the deep center fielder, it's a safety position. And then Sash turns into smash. And he separates Robinson from the football, forcing a fumble. He's had a heck of a football game involved in about eight tackles and one tackle for loss as well. He's come up big before. Two interceptions with a bowl win. 
for South Carolina. Sims says, I'm bringing it out. You're not telling me to stay back here. And will it pay off? Bounces outside. How about the coverage downfield, though? Boy, Iowa doing it in all areas of the game. That time, it was Jack Swanson. Freshman, Naples, Florida. Cyclones have it back in a huge hole. State's got it back, but they're deep in their own territory in a big hole. And coming up next, don't go anywhere. Zach Robinson, Daz Bryant, and the number six Oklahoma State Cowboys on our Big 12 College Football Saturday. That follows. You know, Joel, Des Bryant, Zach Robinson, their contested catch are us. I mean, Des, Des Bryant with that big body can make those contested catches, and Zach Robinson just puts it up there for him to do it. Tiller has taken over. Robinson stays in a running back, but Jerome Tiller, the redshirt freshman from San Antonio's Lee High School. As Robinson is brought down by a hunter. And our days in coaches poll. Well, Texas and, and Oklahoma State find themselves in the top six. And of course, three other Big 12 teams are in the top 25. Oklahoma skids down to number 14 after losing to BYU. It'll be Robinson. Squirms free past the 20. I was on our buddy Joel Platt's radio show about two weeks before the start of the season. Yes. Not knowing what is going to play out, I said, I'll be a contrarian. I'll take Oklahoma State to win the South. And he goes, really? I said, because if they get a lick of defense, mm -hmm. they've got enough offense to compete, and they get Texas at home this year. And Bill Young, the new defensive coordinator, Georgia scored on their first possession. They scored a touchdown. Then 10 straight possessions. Georgia scores no more points. Bill Young can get it done. He's the kids believe in him. They play hard for him. It'll be third and three. Tiller on the slant and close to another pick. That time whisking by the defensive back. <laughs> Spivay right there. You got an injured That's Robinson Ohio getting State. up slowly. Yeah. And, and, and he he was involved in some blitz pickup and he got very very physical there. You know what? Iowa State, if, or Oklahoma State, I should say, if their defense just finishes in the top half of the pack in the Big 12, you know, they've been in the bottom third. If they can crawl into the top half somehow, watch out. Chaney waits for the punt, and a good one at that as it's out of bounds off his fingertips. So the Hawkeyes have it first and 10 outside of their own 30. Well, you talk about a stability factor, and I mentioned earlier to have two head coaches over the last basically 30 years, and that's what Iowa's had. But if you're a parent, your young man is thinking about Division One college football, is that good? Then you want him to play for a head coach like Kirk Ferentz, a quality person. They are really, really lucky to have him in Iowa City. There's no doubt. I mean, there's more to the experience of, of college than just playing football, and he understands that. Right. And he's molding men. I mean, it's not just about football. He's teaching them life's lessons and life skills that they can, can apply to anything. And he is, I mean, top shelf, number one class individual. We've been lucky enough to have a few Iowa football games, Dave, over the last few years together. And any time, and we were on a conference call earlier this week with Kirk, the way he talks about his competitors as well, giving them their just due. Right. Talking about Paul Rhodes earning the right and the respect, it's it's just, it's commendable. Right. And, and you know what type of person he is after you've talked to other people that have coached with him. And it's all, you know, there's no false uh, bravado about it. It is all the way he is. I mean, there's no kind of a front being put on. He is like that every minute of every day. Great human being. Stancy on second down. It's Cheney. Close to the first down. Short by a couple of yards. Well, let's hear it from the head coach of the Hawkeyes. We talked to Kurt Burns. I mentioned earlier this week. And his thoughts on the hiring of Paul Rhodes here at Iowa State. When I left in 1989, this series had uh, really become kind of non-competitive for a while, and uh, certainly that changed dramatically in 1998, and it took an awful lot of hard work. Dan McCartney was the head coach, and Paul was one of his key staff members at that time, uh, and then Paul went on and really has distinguished himself uh, both at Pittsburgh and Auburn, nationally respected, and uh, you know now he's back home in an environment he's very, very comfortable with, so I think it's an outstanding hire for Iowa State, unfortunately, uh, and uh, you know I wish Paul the best all but uh, one, one time a year. I like that. He's sincere, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Pulling for him. And, and this is a guy who's got to recruit against him. Right. So they're going in living rooms and they're recruiting against each other, but they have that much respect for each other. Well, and I think that speaks volumes as to how confident he is 
in, in his abilities. I mean, you know, he knows Paul Rhodes is outstanding, but I think he knows he can get it done as well. So there's nothing wrong with two friends bringing their A game and seeing, you know, how it all shakes out. And there's nothing wrong with being respectful of each other. I mean, that's when competition is at its best. You know, the trash talking junk that goes on. Forget that. Stuff. Right. First down on the run by Robinson, who stays in the game. Stands in the play fake, trying to spin away, and he can't get away. The sack all the way back and a loss of about 12, 14 yards. Josh Raven, the strong side backer. Well, he he stayed, he, he read it out and was very patient. And watch Raven. Here he is in the corner of the screen. And he's going to come off the edge, and he's unblocked. I mean, you know, they had just had a good call, and, and he he had Stanzi in his sights in the open field. Raven took him to the turf. I mean, that's just a basically at, at that at that point, Wally Burnham wins with that call being made on the backside. Iowa had no way to pick him up. Final 30 seconds of the third. I want to get back, but we'll wait until the start of the fourth because Kirk Ferentz is quite a story. The run he's had at Iowa, and that'll do it. That'll be the final snap of the third 15 minutes of play and it was all Iowa as they capitalized on turnovers on field position and the only points of the second half belong to the Hawkeyes on the touchdown pass to the tight end Reisner and then the one yard run the last score of the game by the true freshman Wager. So that'll do it. We are three quarters of the way through and the Hawkeyes have dominated now taking over here in the second half. They lead it 28 to 3 as they honored the Dirty 30 here at Iowa State earlier this afternoon. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Phillips HD. Start of the fourth, and welcome back once again to Ames, Iowa, on third and 22. Well, Robinson <laughs> tracking the defensive back with him. Smith, yes, we start, and that's the first snap of the fourth. Our E Harmony numbers through three. Well, the big numbers are right there. You know, Iowa plus three, Iowa State minus three. Very simple in this one. Turnovers and penalties, turnovers and penalties. I mean, you can't make those significant mistakes against a quality football team from the Big Ten, projected to be third or fourth in the Big Ten, and expect to compete. Josh Lenz waits for the Donahue punt. Made the first miss. Good coverage, though. As they rack him up close to the 18-yard line, Troy Johnson down there early. For the Hawkeyes. So the Hawkeyes dominating in the opening minute of the fourth. Opening minute of the fourth and a 25 point lead. We're welcoming you back to Ames, our best buy connection of the game. And there's PJK, little push off, not detected, not called anyway. No offensive pass interference. He got separation and he finished. Got a little separation from Banks. And he fell on the football and kind of lost his breath. But he is fine, and his team is fine as well with a big, big lead right now, 28 to 3. That may be our best shot of the day right now. Very strong look. Better days ahead for the Cyclones. We know that with Paul Rhodes taking over. And the staff that he is assembled. That's another thing that Kirk Ferentz talked about. He said he had a plan. You can tell by the, the people that he brought in and surrounded himself with. Well, right away, out of the timeout, false start. Ball start. Offense, number 77, five yards, the down remains first. Well, this is what happens when a new quarterback comes in, a different cadence, a little different voice inflection, and if you haven't run that many snaps with them during the course of fall camp and then the first game of the season, some guys, you know, can flinch a little bit, and that's exactly what happened. One of the offensive linemen didn't hold the water up front. Austin Arnott, 10 of 22, you saw him on the sideline, but he's out of the game, four interceptions. Not an injury, it just wasn't his day. Through for only 79 yards after the great day at last week. Jeremiah Schwartz, the redshirt freshman from Orlando, bottled up maybe a yard or two at the most. Give him a couple. And, and finally, to tag it a little bit on Kirk Ferentz, let me also commend those in charge in Iowa City who extended him to 2015. Right. When you have something that good in your department, 
make sure you don't lose them. No, no doubt. I mean, Joel, the stability that it gives the, the football program when you're recruiting people, the, the players know. I'll talk about it more after the snap here. Jeller. Good throw. And Hamilton comes down with it. He's got a first down up to about the 32. When Kirk Ferentz recruits you from Iowa, you know you're not going to have to learn three different systems under three different coordinators. Right. You know you're going to go to that program, and those coaches are going to develop you. And when you have the stability, the continuity, consistency of the staff, everybody's been there 11 years basically, nobody leaves, it helps in the recruiting process big time. Robinson can't get out of the backfield, maybe a half a yard. Claiborne brings to mind. You know what it reminds me of? We got an injured party down to the field right now. Right. Uh, mid 80s, six seasons, I called UCLA football uh -huh. in Southern California. And, and, and you did a good and I was, job. I was lucky enough to be around one of the best people I've ever worked with in my life, Terry Donahue. Sure, sure. And when you're around those kind of people, uh, you're around that kind of quality, it elevates your game. No you, you're challenged, you're motivated. So well, I was around Terry Donahue. Did I ever learn a lot? by a quality person still to this day one of the best guys I've ever worked with and that's what you, when you're around a Kirk Ferentz the Iowa guys will tell you the same well you know when the, when the CEO of the company is, is is outstanding it filters down to the rest of the troops and that's what's happened with this Iowa State football program and that guy right there is a big reason why the biggest you saw Bradford take the, the hit by the unimpeded it was just jailbreak blitz of a linebacker that has to be cleaned up you can't have that happening quarterback Teller on the move and out of the reach of his intended target trying to find that time Darius Dart Jim Knox what's going on downstairs All right, good news for Cyclope fans Reggie Stevens the big offensive lineman all six foot three three hundred and thirty three pounds of them back on the field guys you're not going to keep that guy down are you that's right Knox you know, he's got that size 16 shoe going so he's got a big old base to the foundation and a very, very intelligent uh, young man. He, he has a better than a 3-0 average here at Iowa State. Complete, uh, complete student athlete. He defines large, doesn't he? He's a big fella. <laughs> now Teller with room to roll. Can he get to the first down? Dives very close, and he got it. Five and a half a yard. Excellent job on the edge. Wide receiver Jake Williams staying after it, staying after it, That's getting this block. And, you know, this is how the first down occurred. Extend the play, create a play. Nowhere to go, tuck it and go. Watch Williams right there, just sustaining his block on the perimeter, allowing his quarterback to pick up the necessary yards to move the chain. They got him some snaps in last week's game. Now, bobble, and not a bad adjustment on the spin by Alexander Robinson because it wasn't a clean exchange with his quarterback as Bave puts him down. Yeah, and that's another factor, Joel. I mean, we talked about the offensive line, a different cadence for them. It's, it's it's different. You haven't practiced with this young man as much. The reps, handoffs, everything's different, and you just have to be able to, uh, you know, adjust to it. Don't don't uh, go at your normal speeds. Robinson close to 100 yards now Ooh. as it's batted down off the deflection of the umpire. Broderick Bins reading Bins the quarterback back. perfectly. Yeah, and Bins uh, blocked the field goal. He was the first guy to block the field goal in the back-to-back -back field goal blocks, and he just blocked the pass. So. Vince has got those long arms. He's not afraid to get the muckers up and knock the ball to the turf. Sophomore from St. Paul, Minnesota. And we are only about a four hour drive from St. Paul. So in the upper Midwest, two and a half hour trip over to Kansas City for some good barbecue. And we're going to be there last Saturday of the uh, month. Pass slightly behind the wide receiver. Jake Williams gets his first grab, but he brought it in in front of Greenwood. And he's got a first down. You know, it, it, might as well reward the guy. He threw a block for me on the edge, so I'll throw him the football. Nice adjustment to the football. Protects it. Move the chains again. That's his first career catch. Did not have a catch the previous two seasons. And Tiller going back the same way. Hooking it up. So back to back for Jay, the junior from West Des Moines. Well, you know, he's he's in a situation right now where he's trying to prove to the coaches, I deserve snaps. And nice little job he did of, of using his hands for separation as well. The officials are letting them be very physical down the football field, receivers in terms of using their hands and pushing. Robinson brought down to the second and a yard. And also, I like the way he turned around and the ball was there. Yeah. Tiller's timing was perfect on the out. Absolutely. And they, they've worked together a lot in practice, Joel. I think it's a good move. Put receivers out there. 
that he has worked with during the course of the week and has that kind of timing with him. And now you get guys in the game, they're, they're playing their hearts out. They want to show that they deserve extra snaps. Robinson to the 100 yard mark with that carry. Oh. And Sass has his third. Tyler Sass with his third interception of the day. Amazing. And the a, flag. a late pop as he's put down a block in the back on the return. But what a day. Three picks for Sash. Uh, he did come on big time the second half of last season. And he's also forced to fumble. Yeah, and he's had about 10 tackles, including a tackle for loss. And all he's doing is reading the quarterback's eyes. And the quarterback's eyes are taking him to the promised land. And man, did, 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 did Hotton get a hit on him. The leg of block in the back for on the returning team. 10 yards. First down. Is it, Hotton got his shot, a, though. That offensive it a tackle. Top call. Who's the Big Ten? Defensive player of the week? No. <laughs> I'd like to see right. whoever beats Sash's numbers. I'd right. like to. I'd like to see want, that football. I want, game. Yeah, I want film on him. Yeah. So 28 to three for Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes. It'll be their first win in Ames since 2003, when they won convincingly 40 to 21 and got help from special teams. Kansanai blocked a couple of punts for him. Zachary is in the backfield. Sash has been cash in the bank for Norm Parker today. Stanzi in the flat and out of the reach of his wideout Keenan Davis, the true freshman. But it's our deck direct TV game summary as I always picked it up ever since the early portion of the second 15 minutes of play. They really have dominated. Well, it, it's two safeties. Sash and Greenwood. Iowa asked them to do a lot. Norm Parker expects a lot out of his safeties and they have delivered for him. They have eight returning starters. Defensive tackles are the only major contributors that Iowa lost. And Boy, the safeties have stepped up very, very big. Iowa State's run the ball decently, but boy, they've had four interceptions and lost a fumble. Those turnovers have been coffin nails. Davis, the motion man. Boy, great field vision. Wegger up the middle, but just following his blocks as good as you're going to see. You know, Joel, he has, Wegger has a great wiggle to him. That's what they're playing for right there. They're playing for the hardware. A, a, a lot of guys, is, this is the 57th uh, Cyhawk Trophy at stake. It, it's been in Iowa City after the win last year, 17 to 5 for the Hawks. But uh, a lot of guys run themselves out of plays, running backs. Right. They try to do too, too many things too soon. Too many moves, and all, all he does is go north and south. That's what I like about him. He's got his shoulder pad squared up the line of scrimmage going north and south. Complete. Uh, and the quick one on the outside to uh, Colin Sandem and the junior from that door. You know, they're getting a lot of touches. Joel, when you talk to defensive coordinators, a lot of times they'll be like, you know, if we can just make him run sideways, we can make him go east and west and turn his shoulder pad square to the sideline, we have a chance. Now, if, if we allow him to get those shoulder pads squared up and attack the line of scrimmage, that's when we're going to have problems. And Wally Burnham, who's been around for quite a few years, I mean, he preaches that. Eight years, defensive coordinator of South Florida, they were in the top 30 defensively seven straight years. Second and short. Good adjustment. What a stop by Weger in the backfield. They got to keep it, buddy. Yep. He's almost to the midfield stride because there was nice penetration on the handoff, and he sidestepped it. You know what he does too, Joel? He makes his move at the last minute. A lot of guys make moves too early. He gets right up on top of the defender's toes before he gives that. Look at that. Right up on top of him before he makes the wiggle. And, and he is very, very elusive and deceptive. He doesn't pick his feet up real high. I mean, he shuffles those feet. He doesn't, he doesn't have tremendously high knee action. He's a glider, glider type of guy. But, man, those feet are going 100 miles an hour. It's like the ducks swimming underwater. Those, those legs are churning. Dakota Dune, South Dakota. That's oh. given them, and that's a breakdown. Yeah, they thought it was Sandeman. a double move. Right. <laughs> Sandman was headed to pay dirt. Yeah. And it'll be nine and a half to play. Uh, second and ten coming up. So you, you never know where that source is going to come from. And a lot of times, guys that are low to the ground stay healthier to begin with. Guys like Wenger. Right. Yep, and, and he was impressive on that uh, on the touchdown when he went up and over. I mean, he's got some power on those legs to hurdle his body like he did that deep into the end zone. He's a, he's a very, very solid, talented football player. He's all about the team. True freshman. Good news for Hawkeye fans. On second and long, big Ooh. hole for Wecker. Man. Into the secondary. Piling him up inside the 35, down to the 34. That's his 11th carry of the game, and he's got better than 70 yards. Boy, the Iowa offensive line imposing their will now. 
and they just they just crease Iowa State. Look at the pancake block. That's called finishing a block right there. And he just took them down to the turf. You fit, and then you drive and you finish. And Powell drive him right into the turf. And again, lower his shoulder pads, get every bit he can out of the run, and protect the football. Two freshmen getting two hands in that football. Doesn't want to spit it up. He's got a seven-yard average. 11 for 77. Sims again, but he gets five down to the 29. More importantly for everybody, keeps the clock moving. Inside of 8.50 to play. First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. At Overstock.com, our award-winning customer service will make you feel at home with the O. Overstock.com. And big guard Dace Richardson just got a pancake block. Uh, second time in a row, Iowa State defensive linemen have been not just blocked, but taken to the turf. When you're off your feet, you can't make any plays. You have to stay on your feet, separate from blocks, and get after people. Second and five. Wagner stays in the back. He'll be on Morris, the starting fullback. Takes on the safety again. Helmets go. He's a yard shy, maybe a yard and a half of the first down. He's just a hard runner. And he seems to enjoy the heck out of it. I mean, he gets better and stronger as the game goes on. He's one of those tough minded running backs and boy, they have a couple of them here at Iowa State the Davis brothers. Boy, that when Dan McCarney you know Darren Davis was the first running back in the history of college football to have 2000 yards back to back seasons. And Dan McCarney had that running game going big time here. They had a thousand yard rusher every year it seemed like. Strong side right side. They go up the middle again and it works because Weber just on the hip of his lead blocker to take himself out of the play down to the 16. Absolutely, Joel. He, watch him press the line of scrimmage here. And by that I mean get right up on top of the line of scrimmage in the defense before you make your cut. Be patient with the blockers. Man, when you have a blocker out in front doing what uh, Morse did, just moving linebackers, it's an easy decision to make. Morse has had a touchdown reception, has done a nice job of being the, the sixth offensive lineman as the lead fullback for the running game today. So Wegger in his breakout game 14 carries 95 yards and Pacquiao O'Meara former walk on junior out of Sierra Rapids checks in. Give him another carry let him get a hundy. That'd be nice for the true freshman. Stanzi floating it over Reisner who had a big game against Iowa State last year and also touchdown grab in the today's matchup. Well, this this is this will definitely be a, a, a little bit of a, a setback for Iowa State. You know they gained a lot of confidence after having that first week win and scoring 34 points but they've been brought back to reality here by the Iowa Hawkeyes and Weggers back in the football game trying to get that century mark. I think they realize you know how close you might be down there on the sideline or maybe they just said you know what at some point we're going to give the kid a little bit of a wrestle and catch his breath. 642 to play. It's been all Iowa since the start of the second quarter. Weger making a miss again. Man, look at him struggle for an extra. Inside the 10. That's impressive. There's his hundy right there. He just hit the century mark, and he did it. The offensive line doing a good job, but him just staying after it. You know, make the first guy miss. When you have to make your first cut in the backfield like he did, and you still pick up six yards, that means the guy's doing a nice job at the second level. You know, one guy had a little bit of a malfunction, and his guy got penetration. Weger made a miss. Everybody else operated well, though. Linebacker level kind of taken away, and Weger did a good job of using it. Third, a little more than three, almost four. Weger in the gun with Stanzi. Davis, true freshman wide receiver, was the motion man. He's wide open. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. You know if it's working why change it same type of look that Morse had on his touchdown pass as a fullback out of the backfield you know what set this up is the running game in Iowa State you know crowding the line of scrimmage and a little change the launch point get the quarterback out of pocket give him a two way go that's the gentleman that wants to score smells the end zone full extension get the ball inside the pylon touchdown. So a 12 play 84 yard drive taking a little more than five off the clock and the point after Daniel Murray. A very impressive drive featuring Weger most of the way he's over the 100 yard mark and 
Another true freshman, Keenan Davis, into the end zone. Too many turnovers early for Iowa State. A lot of positives over the last three quarters for the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Tyler Sash up front defensively. Yeah, he recovered that fumble right there, but the thing you need out of your safeties is being alert. Tip balls. You have to be alert. Opportunities are going to present themselves. And he got a couple picks that way, and that's his third. And excited on the sideline. He has been a, an individual takeaway king. Three interceptions, ties the school record, double digit tackles. He forced a fumble. He sold popcorn. He poured Cokes. He did it all I'm, I'm today. Hungry. Don't go there. He did it all. Johnson back deep along with Sims. So our days in defensive leader, Tyler Satch, tying a school record. It'll be Sims picking it up. And Sims across the 35 gives the Cyclones the ball at about the 37 38 yard line. Swanson down to the coverage. So the final five minutes and 40 seconds. A few more snaps for the redshirt freshman from San Antonio, Jerome Tiller. Into the game for Iowa State and a good size guy at 6'3, 200 pounds. He's had. He showed some signs that you like. This release on a couple looked very good on a couple of out patterns. Well, how bright does the future look for Iowa, though? They showcased their two true freshmen right. offensively in that last drive. I mean, all they do is reload at Iowa. They get some talent uh, waiting in the wings. It goes back to what we were talking about the continuity. Yeah, yeah. When you have somebody like Kirk Ferentz. You want to send your young mesh to Iowa City. Jim Knox, what's going on down there? All right, Joe, you talk about the fine freshman performance by Brendan Wegger right behind me, number three. You know, he's, he's a good running back. He's also a smart running back because after getting over 100 yards, he comes to the bench. And who does he congratulate first? Of That's course, it, Noxie. The big offense. That's it, baby. you got to love that guy, Dave Lapham. <laughs> That's he loves man. you. He, That's a smart guy right there, Noxie. You're right. He knows where his bread's buttered. It'll be Teller keeping it. Inside Iowa territory. So a little option action. Cato got him in the secondary. You know, this is a significant, really, getting snaps in a meaningful football game. Of course, the game's out of control in terms of score, but rivalry situation, very physical contest. It's going to help this young man. There's no question about it. You know, offensive linemen live vicariously through the success of their skill people. When your quarterback throws for 303 touchdowns, you know you did your job. When your running back rushes for 100 and a touchdown, you know you did your job. Tiller throwing on first down and interception time. Oh. No. Taken away by a couple back there, Conklin along with Lowe. They turned away from each other. Yes. Conklin and Lowe, either one could have made the interception. They were fighting each other for the football, and neither Conklin one came up with it. The defense on that play. Again. For whatever reason, still trying to throw the football deep into cover two, double coverage, safety and corner right there all over. The safety and corner in the tug of war, ball falls to the turf. So second and ten from the Hawkeyes 41. The running back Schwartz. Brought down by Clue. And this is kind of like what we saw last week. If, if somebody's playing a four shell or a cover two, you have to be able to run the football between the tackles. And Iowa State was doing that decently in the first half with their quarterback run package, as well as Robinson, the running back. And then maybe hurt him down the middle of the field with the tight end a little bit, or, you know, uh, a running back running a wheel route. Iowa's defense has stood in there strong, though. He came in late. Austin Arnott is out of the game, not because of an injury. It just wasn't his day. Little turning around with a flag on the play goes to Josh Lenz, the true freshman from Dubuque. Arnott's numbers 10 of 22, only 79 yards. He was intercepted four times. He could have been picked off a little bit more. He threw it up for grabs all day. Yeah, he did. He was trying to do too much, you know, trying to force the issue. And whenever you do that, it never works out well. You have to let the game unfold and let it come to you. You can't try to dictate what's going on. Pass interference. Offense number 84, 15 yards from the previous spot. We beat third down. That's on the tight end. Catlin. Well, this is going to be the largest margin of victory for either side since Iowa won back in 97. Well, that 43. That helmet's a concussion waiting to happen right there. <laughs> well, I mean, how tight. All right. Man, you got to get at least a cage on that bad boy. There's not a whole lot of padding there. Looking good, though. That's that's form fitting. They must have. Where's, where's his neck? Man. 
Look at, you know, you look, you can pierce that earlobe. You can hang a couple of earrings off of that bad boy out of that ear hole helmet. <laughs> what do you think the size of that neck is? It's about a 21, I believe. Man, it's a big boy. <laughs> Tiller in trouble. And out of the pocket, throws it away. That took some strength to throw it that far on the right. Black with 316 to play. And Tiller and the rest of the reserves, they wanted to stay out there, but it's going to be a punting situation. Coming up now for the Cyclones, and the Hawkeyes can run out the clock. So their first win for Iowa since 2003, when they won by 19 here. And this is a nice statement game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Notoriously, it's off the side of the foot of uh, Brantner. And into his own bench right at the 40. Thank you very much. 307. Uh, left in the contest. Stay with us. We'll return to Ames. James Vandenberg takes over at quarterback and into the ground it goes on first down looking for Keenan Davis got back Mira in there and we get ready for the final 302 as we remind you Big 12 College Football Saturday is presented by Phillips HD the images that move you the most are what we deliver the best brought to you in part by eHarmony.com are you ready to fall in love and by days in the best value under the sun don't look at me that way Dave I hear you coach 3.02 to play. Just change of the play. Take what they give you. And little movement. movement. Little movement. Vandenberg is a redshirt freshman from Keokuk. Iowa 3A Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Another big guy at 6'3", 200 plus. Iowa's got a bunch of them. I mean, Kirk Ferentz was, was an offensive line coach himself. In, in a very, very accomplished one in the National Football League. And he can eye talent in the offensive line. And he can recruit it. And he does a good job of finding wrestlers that uh, know how to maintain their balance and know how to use their hands. And I was always stacked with linemen. On first and 15, hits him in stride. Man. It's a first down for the Hawkeyes. And first grab for Don Nordman, junior wide receiver, Hopkinton, Iowa. Well, Vandenberg transferred his weight through a strike there, didn't he? 6'3", 205 pounder, steps up in the pocket and throws it on the Mune, right between the numbers. And like you said, Joel, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, the key to those guys, they never made their receivers work to make the catch. They hit him in stride. And after that occurs, you're always going to have yards after reception. So first down of the Cyclones 30. And how did he ever make that grab? <laughs> <laughs> Draped all over him. The tight end still comes up with it. And it's taken in by Brad Herman from Metamora, Illinois, a sophomore. Big kid, 6'5, 250. You know, you, you look at the Iowa football team, they passed the eyeball test. We were talking about their wideouts. All 6'4", over 200 pounds. The tight ends are 6'5", and 240 and 50. The offensive linemen are all, you know, 6'5", 300 plus. That, that, they pass the eyeball test big time. It's a big physical group. Packy O'Meara, good blocking over to the left side. And he spins for a first down to the 18. And when you talk about the eyeball test, there are two running backs, Adam Robinson, who went 12 carries for 69 yards, and then Wegger, Brandon Wegger, 15 for 101. Both are freshmen. Redshirt freshman Robinson, true freshman Adam Wegger. Again, the future. Or Brandon Wegger, rather. The future burns brightly for Iowa. You know, it's, they've, they've, got, uh, they've got weapons that they can just roll out there. It's not like they're paper thin. They've got depth. Kirk Ferentz has done a Ferentz has done a great job of recruiting. New running back gets his first carry and bounces off the pile down to the 10. That is Jeff Brinson at 5'11, another redshirt freshman. St. Petersburg, Florida, 215. All right, let's take a look at what Iowa wanted to do to win this football game. They only converted 25% last week. Heck of a lot better than that this week. Well over 50%. Stay in their, in their lanes. Offensive line, they only allowed one sack. They did stay in their lanes pretty well with Arnaud. He did not hurt them in that regard. A couple of pluses right there. Kicking game, they won the field position. Uh, it, turnovers and penalties were as big a factor as anything, but 
they pretty much got done what they wanted to do out there in terms of keys and they won big as a result. A timeout with an injury to David Sims. Well, last year, a big moment for Iowa fans facing number three, Penn State at Kinnick Stadium. Sean Green with the touchdown run early, Iowa 7 0. Penn State, though, led 23 14 going into the fourth. But Iowa came back, won it by a point, knocked off the Nittany Lions 24 23. So, a one point win for Iowa by virtue of this Daniel Murray 31 yard field goal. And that was a huge victory as you stated Joel. A big big win at the end of the season the regular season spurred them on the Outback Bowl. They win that they play Penn State early over in College uh, Park and it's going to be a tough tough test for Iowa. Had a tough long day for Austin Arnott as we just saw but the other extreme the last three quarters for Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes of Iowa as they take the 57th showdown for the Cy Hawk trophy and they were really impressive. Yeah they were I mean they did everything that you need to do. They forced turnovers they controlled uh, the line of scrimmage. Iowa State was hoping to control tempo with that spread attack. Iowa just brought, put them in the meat grinder and ground them up. Let's head downstairs with the winning coach Kirk Ferentz, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, congratulations. I tell you what, you guys uh, were back and forth a little bit in the first half. You took advantage of those turnovers, but in the second half, you guys really poured it on. Our, our defense did a good job getting turnovers, and we were sloppy at the ball the first half, which made it interesting. But uh, great job by our defense. We did a little better job of capitalizing in that second half as well. Speaking of defense, your, your strong safety, Tyler Sash, he came up with three turnovers himself. Yeah, I thought both our safeties really played well, Tyler. Uh, has a knack for finding the football. I hope that continues all season. What does this mean to you? I know it meant so much for the state of Iowa, but to come out here, this is the first win you guys have had here in Ames, Iowa since 2003. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. We've had a couple of tough, tough trips up here and uh, certainly like this outcome a lot better. It's, it's always a tough series. This is only their second game uh, with a new staff, so uh, good things are ahead for Iowa State, no doubt in my mind. Right, Coach, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Joel? All right, class act. Complimenting his opponent once again is Kirk Ferentz as this is a big win for Iowa. Slow starters over the last few years, fast finishers, but off to a 2 0 start and recovering from a oh, very slow beginning at home over Northern Iowa last week. We'll wrap it up when we come back. Cyhawk Trophy still in Iowa City.